right. Hello, hello. Good morning, everybody. Uh, good evening. Good afternoon. Good all the time zones today. Hello. <laughs> good, good global time zones. Global coverage. Yeah. Across <clears throat> the world. Uh, hello to everyone visiting uh, from from Preach's stream. Uh, this is how we start. Our, we we pop in and we say hi before we like official start. Yeah, of the podcast. Well, you know, not not too formal. It's a podcast after all. Uh, all right, Preach. What's with the what's with the mice? What's with the rats? Why are you being greeted by so many rats? Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, Fair. just try to ignore Very it. Well. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. Watch a lot of mob movies. It's vaguely threatening. Yeah. <laughs> if you look directly at it, it won't leave. Okay. Okay. All right. Ignore it. And um, hopefully, it'll go away. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out uh, before we get going here to Blood Z and D for gifting some memberships. Uh, make sure you shoot a thank you their way. And uh, what's with the Alu gamers? Because uh, we got one from Metallic in the form of a super chat. Uh, what's <clears throat> What's with that? Alu is how we say hello on Twitch. We're not, ah. we're, we're, we're uh, the outsiders over here in these YouTube parts. Yes. Ah. Uh, but, but back where I come from, we start every conversation with an Alu, uh, which gives a nice emote uh, of uh, a little phone call. Alu. Ah, yeah, okay. Alu, rat jam. Okay. That's how we say it. Learning, learning. Mm -hmm. uh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> loving Chris here saying, uh, glad to see Preach finally giving Heroes of the Storm the attention it deserves. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, Chris, I cannot I believe that game still note. lives. <laughs> it's I don't, alive. I don't know if you got the note, Chris. But we don't. We're not doing that show anymore. <laughs> I've got some bad news for yeah, you. Yeah, I'm sorry to say. I, I mean, it went to last year, which is pretty damn impressive. You know, full time. Here's the storm coverage. It we I'm kept impressed. it alive. Well, nope. I can't believe it. That game's still alive. I thought they shut it down the whole business. Yeah, still, uh, still get a cue pretty much instantly. Like, uh, as long as you don't go to the, is. as long as you don't go to the draft version. If you go to quick match, you get a game like yeah. Right don't away. don't do ranked. That's uh, yeah, is... you'll be there a while. I'll definitely try out, guys. 100%. <laughs> yeah, I look I look forward to it. I, look I, I to believe it. that statement. <laughs> I look forward to reacting to yeah. your next Heroes of the Storm video. That'll be yeah, fun. It's it's on the schedule for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely on the schedule. Uh, do you have the do you have the clip, Garrett? I do have the Perfect. clip. Yep. All right. I have no idea how long it is, so queuing it up with the music will be interesting. We're okay. uh, we're going we're doing it live today. Okay, let's do it live. All right. Well, I'm all, all right. set on my end. Cool. I'm gonna start the recording on my end. Kyle, you got your backup recording going. I got backups of backups. Sick. The Grinding Gear Podcast, episode fifty-one, uh, with uh, a, a guest that uh, definitely wasn't like one of the most requested ever. Records live in three, two, one. And that, my friends, is out to Taro. Gets work done. Cheers. It's time to grind through the end of the week. This is the Grinding Gear Podcast. I'm Garrett, here as always with Kyle, but Hello. you're not here for us. You're here for our special <laughs> guest today. Uh, you might know him from uh, literally everywhere on the internet. Uh, Twitch, YouTube, you you take your pick. Uh, one of our most requested guests ever, Preach. Uh, we might call him Mike during the show, is here with us today. Hello, everybody. Yes. It's Taro Taro here to tell uh, you a story. All right, let me redo my intro. We have here a uh, chain smoking Tataru. <laughs> Morning, lads. I just go to our bed. What's happening? Uh, to, uh, we're curious. What's the last uh, ridiculous thing that Alphano charged to the Scion's account, and why are you mad about it? That little bastard here. He got me to buy him 50 uh, paintbrushes. So what about your soulless booty? And I told him to shove it right up there, because, frankly... We've all seen it. I choked on my water. Oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> it was the only voice that made sense to me when I saw her on screen. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it just made perfect sense. It fit perfectly. That's how it had to be. 
lovely. <laughs> in the early days of us streaming Final Fantasy fourteen, it was one of the, uh, the ev like everyone was just like, "Have you seen Preachers to Taru?" And I'm like, "Wait, what? The, the WoW guy? What?" <laughs> Apparently, at some point, I was labeled the number one roleplay streamer, and I was like, where hmm. did this come from? How did oh. this happen? What happened? Where am I now? And we have a big thank here? you to give you, too, because apparently you are responsible for making the trolley section as joyous as it is. Praise be, baby! Yeah! Raise Apparent it to the sky! There were some nerves <laughs> in the room when we got there, because people were like, oh man, this is the slow part, all the streamers always complain about this. But the trolley energy, the worship, the cult of the trolley was going strong. Yeah. I don't know what people wheels. are talking about. You, we just left the slow part, which is anything to do with the new Mal. Uh, that is the slow part. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you guys are going to start slagging off Shadowbringers, I don't know if we can talk, honestly. <laughs> well, everyone's <laughs> I mean, so <laughs> excited that you're here. We need to balance it out by enraging the Final Fantasy XIV players by pointing out the parts of Shadowbringers that, you know, maybe weren't the most memorable. I I, I honestly don't remember them. So that was There you go. For me. Hey. I, I'm trying to think back of Shadowbringers. And I'm like, I do not remember a moment where I was not enthralled. So I guess it was so <laughs> non memorable. I literally didn't remember it. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, remember no, lollipops. It, it was good. It happens. It happens. Yeah. Did you guys I, cry? Was that tears? Uh,. Yes, actually, because I we've become kind of famous for not crying. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yes, at the very end of. Uh, by the way, spoilers for everything spoilers. up to the title <laughs> card of Ben Walker on today's <laughs> podcast. Spoilers up to that because I don't know how else we're going to navigate this conversation. Uh, but yeah, um, the part where uh, uh, Mrs. Chai says goodbye to Alphino uh, wrecked no, me. No, that on, uh, it, it, she, she, she reminds me of my mom, uh, uh, which when I say it like that, makes it sound like my mom is no longer with it. My mom is still very much with us. Uh, but there was a time where this kid who went to art school left home for the other side of the country. And I got a conversation from my mom very much like that, that I really took for granted at the time. And so seeing it in the game, like that hit me like a ton of bricks. Also, I wasn't really wow. expecting it. Yeah. Okay. Not the yeah. doggy at the end. No, because the, uh, the, 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 the giant talking bird people came out, came up after the new mouse. So I was so done with that zone by the time we got to the talking, like I completely forgot that he was even a character. <laughs> you wound him. You wound you the hurt me deep inside. Yeah. That messed me up. I, I just told you the new mouse was like one of my least favorite parts of the game. <clears throat> and immediately after that is the, well, no, no, uh, no, no. I think, I think, Amaro? I think instead what, what preach is talking about here is the scene following the chai moment which you had just cried and the you know yes the the mystical flying dog bit yeah well yes but okay, i'm saying i was never respectful now i was never that invested in the first <laughs> place on top of the fact that the scene before that hit me on a more personal level wait wait, wait. are you a cat guy because i <laughs> we're gonna have an issue going forward that's all i'm saying I, um i'm just i'm just gonna leave down here for no particular reason all right, that's it. We're All right, yep, he's out. <laughs> he's out. Show's over, everybody. Just have oh, to no, enjoy no. the show love. Show is not over. Show is about to increase its skill. Ah. 2,000%. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, it's a throwdown. Okay. It's a yeah, pet throwdown. There we go. Oh, okay. Well, we'll have <laughs> oh, to get the dogs in victory. here. victory. I have three dogs. I have three dogs. So we'll okay. Just, this is we just have a menagerie here. Okay. Doctor, you have you three can... dogs, and Seto still didn't get you. That's dark, isn't it? Steve? It's a good, it's a good scene. Um, I've, I've, I've been numbed by how many movies in my childhood uh, use killing a pet <laughs> as a cheap shot for emotions. Oh god, games are so much worse now as well. There is like, every dog that appears in a game, I'm like, that dog is dead immediately. Mm. That dog is so doomed. They might as well give it a red shirt and send it on a spaceship. That At least you can pet him now. Destined. You know, the pet interactivity is in the game, so you know, we got that going for us. Yeah, I wasn't that far out of my r play of Ragnarok as well, and the beginning of Ragnarok wrecked me on a on a dog level. Yeah. Okay. That that the beginning of the game <laughs> is rough. Yeah, well, that's one I've skipped at the moment. Uh, it's it's on okay. The list. It's on the list. <laughs> it's fine. I like the yeah. I like the first one better. We've had such a good year of video games, like last two years. It's like every week there's something else. Like I was just at ExileCon for Path of Exile 2, 
and their new season starts like tomorrow and we have like three other things coming out at the same time i'm like this is so ridiculous and i haven't even touched baldur's gate 3 which everybody's playing i'm not playing it till december it's uh, it's been a rough time to get every game i'm covered in dog hair now i like actually look i look like oh, yeah. that oh, japanese no, guy who made a dog suit I'll be inhaling cat hair for the rest of the podcast because of that little stuff. That's, yeah. in, that's impressive. Worth. December, yeah, your your content scheduled out that far. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Our, our schedule is done till uh, for this year. It's done till February, end of February, kind of. Uh, we have I have some flexibility that I can throw stuff in, but uh, yeah, for the most part, it's done up until February. Not that our audience cares though; they just want it now, <laughs> now. Must be now. Oh, this gate's a massive game. I've never had so much um, uh, sleep avoidance in the last five years. Like it's just, oh yeah, but it's it's, it's good, but it's rough. It's it's good rough. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready for it. Divinity Original Sin Two. I've rated as like my second best RPG of all time. Like from a, an RPG standpoint, like, I, and I didn't know what I was getting into. I played that was one I threw in randomly into the schedule, and uh, I ended up taking two hundred hours, I think, something like that. About right. Uh, to get through, and I loved every second of it. Like, I didn't care if I had zero viewers or whatever. So I was playing the hell out of this game. <laughs> like, this game is so good, and I'm super. I mean, we had people from Larian come and see us at our event. Um, but all our audience is playing Baldur's Gate three, and it feels weird to play a game when your audience is so invested in RPGs that they want to play it too and they don't want to get spoiled uh, you know like it'd be like playing it's like when you, you you guys will eventually hit that point where the new msq is coming and nobody wants to hear from you at all like shut up because they've been working or they haven't had a chance to play through it yet or you know or certainly if you're streaming it they're like no we're not watching like it, it's kind of incredible to watch on twitch when the new msq comes out if it was world of warcraft and there's a new patch viewers are through the roof right like everybody's checking out what's going on yep with with final fantasy boo nose dives for about two weeks uh, and then people come back it might speak to the <laughs> satisfaction of the of the endings between the two games the quality mm -hmm. yeah 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 but also that's just being two very different types of games right like one is very 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 much about getting to the end and for a lot of people one is very much about the journey yep so yeah, for sure. yeah, there's, That's... there's that to it as well. Um, but uh, you know, it's your first time on the show. So for folks who somehow maybe aren't familiar with you, how did you get started making stuff on the internet? Um, I was a wow player since the beta of old wow. I'm an old man now. And, um, I, about <sighs> around cataclysm, I really, I'd always been a multi-classer in World of Warcraft. So my history of raiding, I've always been a top-end raider, uh, was I was the guy you could go to if we were missing something, uh, a class or a spec, and we needed it like right now. I was the guy you could call. And uh, as long as Blizzard doesn't shout at me again. So they used to, let's say uh, our Resto Druid quits for some reason, I would get their account and play it while we got a new guy. And I was very, very good at picking up at any class in WoW and playing at a very high level, like very, very quickly. And so in Cataclysm, I wanted to try Rogue out and I was seeking information and there was just nothing out there. Like uh, YouTube was like fledgling days, you know, people were getting started. Like uh, this is where Jesse Cox started to rise and Total Biscuit and people like that. And every video I checked on Rogues in World of Warcraft was always the same. It was a guy just saying, get five combo points and press eviscerate. Press, get five combos, press slice and dice. And that was it. That was, and I was like, I know from my experience, there's so much more to it than this. And it was annoying me. And so at the time I was watching Total Biscuit and Jesse. And I was like, maybe I could have a go at this. And I made a video. Uh, the first video I ever made actually was for Warcraft movies. And it's still up to this day. And that was the very, very first time I tried to make a WoW video. And I think that video on its own made 1.2 million views. Like my very first video. And wow. I was like, yeah, but it also took everything out of me. Like it took six months to make. Uh, there's so many things because it was 45 minutes long and it was took it all out of me and I didn't want to do it again because you couldn't also didn't earn any money. There was no business opportunity like to go into it because you just uploaded it and people watched it, but people loved it. And then YouTube came along and it was like, maybe this is something I could do. So I made a few guides and they very quickly took off. Uh, and then I, the people like, can you do one for this class, this class and this class? And so I just started doing that because uh, then I was having fun uh, while I, I, did, I shot every video at the weekend. 
because I had a day job, obviously, and I shot every video at the weekend and spaced them out over the week and just went from there. And that's that's what I did for like seven years, seven or eight years was just making wow guides and wow opinion pieces, essentially, up until Shadowlands when uh, I got unhappy. <laughs> I got very unhappy. And, uh, I didn't like it. So I went away and uh, moved over to other things and actually didn't start ff for a while because everybody was le all the content creators were leaving world of warcraft at the time all the big wow ones were all abandoning ship uh rightfully so uh i was and all going straight to final fantasy i was like i'm not into that so we played uh, uh, well final fantasy had been uh, my exposure to final fantasy 14 specifically was people sending me made outfits people dressed as power rangers and i came from world of warcraft which was the like more hardcore beat each beat things to death hardcore combat system and all that kind of stuff and i was like i am not playing this wee boss game like there's no chance in hell Boy, that sounds familiar hmm, who would ever yeah. say that i wonder everybody because <laughs> they're, they're guilty your audience is guilty every single one of them who tries to get someone to play final fantasy sends them something ridiculous and uh, but and then goes how can you not play this game while showing you like a naked cat boy sat on a lamp staring at you <laughs> and you're just and like listen that's not my kink i'm not yeah kidding. if it's yours that's cool but it's not for me yeah you're clearly all fapping to this and i can't stand what you're showing me like they don't talk about the story ever like now they do like people have started to change and say oh you should come and play for the story they don't talk about like it's got the hardest mmo rating in any of the mmos right now is in final fantasy 14 they don't talk about the social aspects which are better than any mmo right now like the stuff you could do with role play and house design and all that kind of stuff is an absolute highlight of that game and dwarfs everything else that's out there they don't talk about any of that they send you somebody dressed as a namazu with a rubber duck head on uh <laughs> dancing like with their pants down or somebody dressed as a drug dealer or something and so um yeah that's that's i was totally off put by it um and my team actually tricked me <laughs> um we did a subathon for charity to get presents for families who couldn't afford presents for kids at christmas so we did a big charity drive for that and they snuck in a goal at twenty thousand oh. subs yeah that's how it happened Snuck. because uh, yeah they snuck in a goal at twenty thousand subs mike tries final fantasy 14 and when i saw it appear i knew what it was and i instantly went into my discord and thankfully we still have the records of it and i typed to the team <laughs> We can't do that because people are going to hit like 20,000 subs, maybe like we're hoping they do that. And I'm going to hate it and play it for like a day and not be happy. And this is like one of the end goals we're going for. Like this is, this is unfair to the audience, but they had confidence. They were like, trust, it'll be fine. Uh, Cause we know what you think it is. That is there. There's no denying it. It is there, but it won't work that way. Trust us uh, and let it go. Uh, and there's a lot of sarcasm in our logs of that Discord the morning I was going to play it, saying like, I can't believe we're doing this. Look, I'll make an agreement. We'll we'll play for five days, like a week, uh, you know, a working week. And at the end, I'm fine to say goodbye. People should be okay that I gave it a fair try. And I was hooked after the first like three hours. Like I was in. I was so. I was so. Oh in. wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because nothing I expected happened. I didn't get like I A R the second I got into the game. <laughs> Right. And in fact, I think most of my audience who had the game and had been around for a while stayed away from me. Like they made that conscious choice to not harass me and follow me around or do any of that stuff. Mm. They all stayed away and just let it happen. And uh, going through it, I was like, okay, I don't like this Alpha No character. Like, why is he talking to me about flags and nonsense while I'm trying to listen to the speeches? Uh, this guy, this little, weird little kid keeps following me around. His sister looks like him. It's a bit creepy. Oh. They're wearing the same clothes, whoever. You know, because you don't know who these characters are yet. You're just getting into it. So it's like, these characters aren't special. They're just irritating me, <laughs> like, so much. Yeah, I, d I didn't like Alpha No until almost Stormblood. <laughs> I think most people don't like Alpha No. He's bossy. He's telling you what to do. He's and, a jerk. Yeah. He's an immature jerk. And uh, now he's the king. I, I, I know in... Sh I can't talk about it. <laughs> oh, no, you can't. No, you can't. Very <laughs> well. The, 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 the is art, like... Because we're, we're, we're trying to do terminology from one country to another. Do you have, like, RAs in college? Uh, like, what, room, uh, they're, like, room monitors? Yes. Do you have room... Okay, so it's room monitors. Uh, is that what it's called over there? Resident assistant. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the answer yeah, is the no, we don't. 
Oh, okay. Okay. In our dorms, yeah, our university dorms don't have that. You okay? Self-police. In the in the states, that's a thing. In the dorms, it's it's like the resident snitch. And to me, Alpha No early like Alpha No has big uh, student snitch energy. <laughs> like she just a takes loser. everything way too seriously, <laughs> follows all the rules. Uh, but he's and- he's written so well, right? Because he makes the Crystal Braves, and you all laugh. I'm sure you laughed when that name came out, and you're like. What's such a loser? Nerd. I mean, I like anime enough that I was like, that makes sense. That's that doesn't surprise me. That's what they named it. <laughs> oh yeah, that fits. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I really wasn't on board. But you're right. They they put that character through the ringer. Like the the game is aware of the, the game is aware. Yeah, he has he to is. suffer a lot and fail a lot to get to where he is. Certainly by Shadowbringers, uh, is where he's matured and he's changed. But if, if I, I I did a tier list of every character per expansion as we played it. Uh, at request so it's like okay we finished our reborn what do you think of the characters i think alphano was ranked uh below hell uh somewhere <laughs> down there <laughs> it was like everybody else then like alphano was down there and tataru sorry i was not a fan of tataru for a very very long time oh, um, i always liked tataru i was just, I just thought she was not for me evil small. heroin heroin peddling <laughs> like the, the things that that lady has got up to in the background are just unheard of. The slave labor, the camps that she runs. She took over our island in order to make it her own little haven for offshore trading. Yeah, she's done some bad things, that girl. Um, <laughs> so them two were like at the bottom of the barrel. And then it's interesting to see now, and I've, I've actually encouraged everybody who started, I have to do the same thing. It's like, hey, when you finish, you don't need to do it on stream and make content out of it. Just like get a notepad and just write down the order of people that you like. And then you see the shift over the course of the expansions, like the, the, when certain events happen, how they, well, and now, now there's people like in tears at one of them potentially leaving or whatever. You know, when you get to those moments in Shadowbringers where it's like, what's happening? Or even leading into Shadowbringers where all disappearing. And you're like, well, <laughs> I can't live without them now. And that's why, I'm, that's why I try to stop people getting boosts for Final Fantasy. So I'm like, you're not going to get what people see in this game without it, because it is the story. Uh, that, that's the big yeah. hook. Uh, so and everything else is on top. So where'd you get to in like the five days that you felt hooked? Because A Realm Reborn's big. A Realm Reborn, yeah, it was a weird experience because everybody was being so protective over my experience. And so I can't remember where we got to in that five days. I just know at that point we committed to playing. And it wasn't a case of like, I'd said on the Monday, we'll probably hard stop on Friday and I'll give my conclusions and thoughts and whatever. But by Tuesday, at least, I was like, there's no end date to this. We're going. Like, it's fine. I, I'm into it. I'm enjoying it. We're having fun. Um, I know that when I got to the end of the uh, core campaign, and then you get into like the post MSQ, a lot of people, including people on my own team, were like, you should probably do this off stream so you can skip. Because now you have this weird period where you don't earn any experience. The story could be a bit meandering. Uh, and it's quite a long chain of of story that's going on. And I honestly do believe if I had not been streaming it, I probably would have skipped through several sections of it. But frankly, I, I do have that advantage of when we're streaming to like a large audience is that if a part of the game is a little bit meandering, uh, you can fall back to conversation with people and I don't really, it doesn't affect me as much. Uh, so I actually had a lot of fun with the post The Realm Reborn stuff. Uh, like it was not a problem uh, to go into Heaven's Ward. But it was Heaven's Ward... That really grabbed me. Heaven's Ward, uh, Realm Reborn, I thought was fine. My overall opinions were like, this is cool. It's better than the WoW story because I'm a big story guy in video games. I love game stories, but I hate the WoW story so much. It's why um, I started playing WoW. Uh, it's <laughs> the same way. Warcraft 3 uh, charmed my pants off with the narrative that it told because um, I was never an RTS kid, but I heard it It had a good narrative and I'm like, that's that's strange. Um, yeah. And it, 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 I was really impressed by it. And so when I heard that World of Warcraft was was coming out, I was like, well, oh, damn. Well, I want to see the rest of the Warcraft 3 story. I want to see where this goes. Arthas yeah. is chilling at the top of the Frozen Throne. What happens next? Uh, I never played Warcraft 3. And uh, I only ever played WoW for the combat and the raiding. And I didn't like the story. And when Wrath of the Lich King was announced, all of my guild was losing their minds. And all I saw was rip off Lord of the Rings. I was like, I do not get what you guys are so <laughs> excited about at all. I was like, this okay. guy is just Sauron. Like, what are you guys hyped about? With the, was the pointy dragon. helmet. Okay, I yeah. see it. Yeah, okay. Like, that's all I saw. I was like, what are you guys cheering for? This is just rip off Lord of the Rings. Uh, and they were like, what are you saying? It's Arthas. I'm like, I have no idea who Arthas is. I have never heard of that. It's like, that's Stratholm, Stratholm, the grain, the grain. I'm like, 
Okay, so they baked bread in Stratholme and then what? Like Saruman, <laughs> Saruman came. Like, and they're like, oh trust. And then they were like, trust me, it's awesome. And go play Warcraft Three, which I still haven't done. Uh, so yeah, that was the uh, great sadness. But it happens. Well, if, really if only they off. would remake Warcraft Three with better graphics. Yeah, if only, you know, yeah. That'd, be, that'd be such a smart One decision. One day. <laughs> be such a smart decision. I would love to replay through that game with more modern sensibilities. Yeah, one day, one day we'll get there. Just it's a shame they never remade Warcraft nope. 3. Never happened. I certainly didn't watch the downfall of that in real time, uh, an event. Nope. Nope. Yep. Never happened. Never, never happened. happened. Just blank it out. And that day I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> that so, day I'll be there. So jumping around a little bit, you got, you, you, you left Shadowlands and I, I was in the same boat as you like i didn't play shadowlands but i watched every video that was coming out as you know people were moving over to final fantasy 14 and kind of exploring mm -hmm. mmos and you said you, you know you're not a big story person for world of warcraft though you love rpgs and story when it comes to video games yep so what was the gameplay part of shadowlands that was getting you down um it got <laughs> I have to be a little careful what I say here because there's, there's been a lot of uh, discussions behind the scenes that have resolved issues. Like I'm, I'm pretty good terms with Blizzard now because uh, uh, you know it, there was there was definitely like you, like we Google before because we were laughing about the picture on the thumbnail. It's like if you Google me and check images, it's news articles in newspapers of me leaving World of Warcraft and things like that and not being invited back when I got banned. Um, but it was the constant, they turned the game, they were so desperate for to maintain content, which you can't do in an MMO. And it's something I really appreciate about 14 and Yoshi P in particular, is you cannot possibly provide enough content to keep a player getting fresh, interesting things every single day for potentially eight plus hours a day. Like it's impossible, it'll be consumed so much. Uh, but instead of going say the Final Fantasy 14 route, which was, Come back when there's more stuff. It's fine. Go and play other games. We're totally cool. If you want to play our game all day, every day, that's fine. We have got stuff you can do that's repeatable, right? Uh, you can go do hunts and stuff. You can do hunt trains. You can do the boss farm. You can do the mount farm. There's all that stuff exists in Final Fantasy XIV, but you absolutely do not have to do it. And if you're getting burnt out doing that, please just go away for a bit and then come back when we've got new MSQ, if that's your favorite thing. Whatever it might be, that content is coming and we will be here waiting for you. It's totally fine. Well, Warcraft and Shadowlands went the other way. It was like, how do we keep people with stuff to do every single day, regardless of what they're doing? Um, uh, what their lifestyle is, for example. And so it was, you know, the gameplay of actual combat was fine, but Torghast and uh, doing the maw, collecting, clicking those souls every day, all that, everything that you had to do every day was so grinding that I remember I changed my entire streaming schedule so that Wednesday we had this sort of brutal not fun period of time where we would do everything that was the weekly requirement to play the game which was to do the rating on wednesday and we'd usually have a massive stream where we're not doing anything particularly fun we're grinding mythic plus out just to get the vault reward we're going to do all the more stuff we're going to do torghast and get that out of the way all that kind of stuff and i'm like what am i doing like who is this for and it's not for me like i'm doing all this so i can eventually play the game i want to play um and then when it came to alts it was like, okay, as soon as you added one alt into Shadowlands, it was like, okay, well, you've just magnified everything you need to do, like, ex exponentially. And I like to play all the multiclasses. That's what I started doing in World of Warcraft all the way back in vanilla. And now you're talking if I wanted to play all 12 classes, which is what I like to do, which is like, what, 48 specs or something. Um, I have to do 24 or 36 Torghast runs a week. Oh my. To get an item to play them. And not even, like, in a short period of time, because each legendary is spec specific if you want the good ones so that means if you're a druid and you've got four different legendaries and maybe even five if they swap around that's months of torghast just to be able to play and experience a class in dungeons and raids and have fun with it like i have all this stuff on top of me and i was miserable and it actually was i was so miserable i was kind of keeping up with it and then of course we had all the allegations come out um with what was going on at blizzard internally and on that day, I remember waking up, going to the bathroom, had my phone, because, of course, you got to check in with what happened while you're asleep, because the internet never sleeps. And I saw all this, and I was like, I'm done. And I messaged the team, and I was like, I'm just letting you guys know. I'm not going to cover WoW anymore. I've had enough. I'm done with it. Um, you might lose your jobs off the back of this, because our entire channel in existence had been built on World of Warcraft content. 
And so I was just letting you guys know I'm making this decision. I'm really sorry. Uh, the whole team stuck with me, though. Like, we'll be fine. It's fine. Um, let's see how it goes. Uh, and that's when I did it. Uh, it was terrible. It was miserable, though. But it wasn't like the gameplay itself, because that's still great. Like, I play Dragonflight, and Dragonflight's super fun. Uh, it was all the stuff that came with it. And I remember Ian, uh, when I was sat talking to Ian, who's the game director of WoW, and he said, like, when it's kind of dawned on them, it's like, if you have the choice between going for a meal with your family, a nice dinner out, and in the back of your mind, you're thinking, but I still have to do my tour gas run before the reset. Are you thinking about World of Warcraft in a positive light? Obviously not. And we don't want to be doing that to players ever again. And I was like, thank you. Finally. <laughs> Seeing what we've been trying to tell you for so long. It's like, I, I, I can't come out tonight. I have to go on because the weekly reset's coming. And I haven't done my chores because I put them off for so long. Uh, so that's what drove me away eventually. Mm. No. I, I get you there. Did you find the dance of Final Fantasy raiding a challenge after World of Warcraft? There's this idea and kind of it's, it's, it's the fun of world of warcraft that like you're versing the game you're gonna break it and we'll get a warlock to tank this and wow whereas final fantasy is like you do our game and you will dodge the things or it'll be all over uh and wow i hate them <laughs> and wow i hate dance fights so i have done for years so like uh my worst raid fights in world of warcraft are hell yeah uh operator thogar uh, which might not mean a lot to ff fans but those are very strict dance fights that exist within world of warcraft you have to go from a to b to c to d and if you don't do that you wipe uh so fights like that i hate because world of warcraft is such fast-paced tempo high movement very quick combat in nearly all characters with very responsive stuff in FF, though, it makes perfect sense. That's why those two games are so different. And I, for many years, because uh, I, I do a lot of casting for the Race to World first, FF14 would come up, and I would do very simple baby-like questions, like, well, how long did it take to kill the latest FF raid? And they're like, two days. I'm like, well, this one took a week. Clearly, this is harder, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, ridiculous statements like that would be flying around amongst the casters. Uh, and then when I came to try it, I was like, oh, this is a dance fight. But in the context of how FF14 gameplay works, it makes perfect sense and it fits. Uh, and especially because they don't use boss mods and you're much more engaged with what the enemy in the environment is doing. Whereas, wow, you, do, you can get away with never looking at the boss. And a lot of the guides I did was you don't need to look at the boss. You can stare at a wall if you have low FPS because your boss mods will kind of tell you what's coming and when and what you need to do. Um, it changed the whole thing. I very much enjoy it. And I've, uh, that's, it annoyed a lot of people. You might, guys might have had this. Uh, with playing through Final Fantasy is I wouldn't move on to the next expansion until I completed all the extremes of the previous one because I wanted to try them all out because I love raiding. And the MSQ, there's, there's a certain portion of the audience uh, that loves the MSQ and only want to see you play the MSQ who were furious at me for that very reason. Like, why aren't you going straight into Heaven's Ward? I'm like, well, I haven't done all the extremes yet. I, uh, I feel seen. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I feel right now. Yeah, no, we, we we're not. We didn't set out to do every extreme, but we do most extremes before mm -hmm. we move on, um, and we do all of the quote unquote optional content before we move on. So, uh, such as uh, the stuff that you don't that, that the MSQ doesn't require. So the trial series from every expansion, yeah. we do that before we move on. The both raid series from every expansion, we do that before we move on. Which usually the alliance raid is like barely a part of the story um yeah. but we we do all that and then we'll usually do most of the mainline extremes so the first extreme we did was shinryu uh because our chat wanted to watch us suffer and that's what they convinced us should be our first extreme so then did uh, you go back and do the old ones yes after that? yeah so we started Some streaming around mid heavens ward like right before the nidhogg fight okay which is a great fight on Extreme. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Did you do Thorden? Yeah, Thorden Extreme was really fun. Th that was our roughest that one. Was, like, it you know, is we rough. Were yeah. Yeah. All I those phases. I think we took slightly longer to do Sukiyomi Extreme. Okay. The moon phase wrecked us. The moon like, rocks, absolutely the moon holes. wrecked us. Yeah. Um, I really have fond memories though, of that. I, I don't think I have felt that much elation killing a boss since. Uh, I used to raid pretty hardcore in WoW and in, in Wrath, and we got Cindergosa down for the first time because I think we were stuck on Cindergosa for like a month. Oh, uh, heroic! 
No, just normal ass. Oh, just okay. my 10 man. Like we, that, that group, I rated like four days a week, but that group, we only rated two days a week. Yeah, and that's then, good. Yeah, we, we, we. Those, those feelings stuff. incredible though, right? That's why I've yeah. always loved rating since I first did it all those years ago is like that feeling, especially when it was 40 man back in the day. Hearing all those people scream and cheer all across the world, like that's an unbeatable feeling for me. Like yeah. I absolutely, <laughs> I still love it to this day. It's so good when you hear even the quiet people that like barely ever speak because you know you'd have 40 people in ventrilo or team speak or whatever and then even them are like yeah you hear these voices you've never heard before i'm like wow this is sick this is so awesome and that's what that hooks me immediately i missed it so much because i really didn't regularly raid after wrath i still played a lot of wow and i still got into raid groups but i wasn't as involved i wasn't the main tank anymore i just i wasn't and and we didn't suffer as much i feel like I, when i was 10 man raiding in in wrath like we we hit it as soon as it came out before the buffs would roll out and it was uh -huh. still pretty difficult um so i i really missed it and it's something i never did with you kyle and now we're we're extremely close friends so it was we we've talked about this has been coming up a lot lately on our streams when we talk about like recommending 14 to other people one half of it is we feel it's impossible to recommend because how do you it's like trying to recommend like a a, a massive novel to somebody yeah. how do you convince someone that this thick stack of paper is worth your time and that this this, this story gets good i can tell them about the end of Shadowbringers, but they're not going to understand why any of it matters. No. You're going to be like, yo, this dude opens a door and a city's on fire. And your friend's going to be like, okay, and who gives a shit and why? Yeah, that but was in Final Fantasy VII, right? Same thing. <laughs> <seen it before. laughs> yeah, when you get to it, though, it's an amazing moment. Mm -hmm. um, but the other half, the thing we've really been talking about lately is that we think it's insane that no one talks about the quality of the of the what is essentially rating in this i know it's trials and raids are its own thing but i think of like extremes and beyond as that's the difficult content of final fantasy 14 and so, i i can't believe no one recommended it to us because kyle and i both have extremely fond rose-colored memories of our heyday of raiding in world of warcraft and no one even mentioned it to us and we're like yo the gameplay in this game is also as good if not better as the narrative it is, and uh, they don't push you into doing it either. Um, like they'll do it for the story mode, but it's usually an extremely easy LFR version for wild wow, listeners of what you're going to actually fight. Yeah, um, and it's <laughs> it's hard to describe. But one thing I've noticed is um, obviously part of my job is um, when I do some pro more professional stuff is to try and explain raid fights to people, right? To a lot of people, um, is describe trying to explain a raid fight is extraordinarily difficult to somebody who doesn't play the game. Like, it's almost impossible. So I could take an FF ex Savage Raider and show them a World of Warcraft raid, uh, and they will have no idea what's happening, despite their advanced experience of dealing with a, almost essentially identical mechanics. It's presented in such a complex, busy way, and they always go, oh, the add-ons, the add-ons, the add-ons. Like, I can't see through the add-ons. I don't know what the hell's going on. But similarly, I could take a World of Warcraft player and then show them FF Savage, uh, which doesn't have any add-ons, but there's so many explosions and lights and things like that that to them it's a mess. <laughs> like they're like, how do you even tell what's going on? Like you know, you can get some of these mechanics that just fill the screen with fire and explosions and lasers. So I, I don't even tell what's going on. And I I think it is difficult to sell somebody on the rating until they play the game. In fact, I think that's true of any MMO. It's like you need a couple of hours here to then it starts to fit in because you're used to seeing it and you're gradually building up, especially as a new character. And it's exactly the same reason that all my friends who've boosted, who joined me from WoW after I started playing, I'm like, hey, I'm still in those discords and stuff. It's like, this game is really good. Uh, the rating's actually sick. Um, the same as you guys found. It's like, I've been doing these extremes. They're really fun. Even the old ones. And because they have the, um, they've always built the game with scaling in mind. It's not exact, but it's pretty close is that you can go and do a Realm Reborn extremes. And it's challenging, fun content. You can go and do Heaven's World. You have all these raid fights just sitting to, in, waiting for you. It's not just, in World of Warcraft sense, the latest expansions, and then a really scuffed time-walking version, which is not really very close to the original. Uh, and you have all this co raid content available to you as well. And then they, they inevitably buy a boost. And they're just lost. And they're like, I don't know what to do. They're like at training dummies, practicing, like they would do him wow. And I'm like... <laughs> 
you, you, it's not the way to introduce you to that game. Like, don't buy the yeah. boost. Uh, it, you're, you're just missing it. You're depriving yourself of such a good experience, and you're also coming in with the wrong mindset because you're trying to play this game like it's World of Warcraft. And I had the same thing in Guild Wars 2, which I just did recently, is you approach that game with a WoW mindset or an FF mindset, you're not going to have a good time because the game doesn't work that way. Looks the same. Has, looks the same, but it's not the same. So, for the hell of it. Sell us close on... this door. I can hear you, though. <laughs> oh, okay. sell us on, on Guild Wars 2 because uh, it's come up a few times and, and I played it at launch because I was a Guild Wars 1 fan, but fell off pretty quickly. Uh, how should I approach it differently than I approach WoW or 14? Um, so the, the biggest thing I think that hit me going into that game was there's no quests system that you're used to. So if you think about World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy 14, uh, in Final Fantasy 14, you get off the carriage with the twins and you're very quickly led from A to B to C to D and you're off in the MSQ like immediately. You're off to the Adventures Guild, etc., etc. Uh, and in WoW, same thing. You have the shipwreck introduction zone now and then it'll take you through a little quest series that's very confined, even if you're a brand new player. Uh, super linear, little bit of exploration in a little wooded area and then you're off to kill a little mini boss and then you, you go, I believe now, someone told me today, you go off to... Uh, you can choose anywhere now, actually. You go off to an expansion and you'll be fine. Uh, Guild Wars 2, you don't have that. They give you a bit of a, an introduction that's probably five minutes. And then you're on your own. And most people have no idea what to do. But that is teaching you how this game works. It's just that you're coming in with the mindset of like, oh, shouldn't I have quest breadcrumbs that are going to tell me where to go? That game doesn't work that way because they have a horizontal progression system, which the other games don't have. Uh, which means that you do have levels, but it's only in the core game. So imagine you've got all your levels in A Realm Reborn or in vanilla World of Warcraft. You hit level 60 and you're done. There's no more leveling to be done in that game. Um, every single piece of content they've added is sideways, including the initial zones. So you explore and you can do 100% of the zone you're in or no percent or 10%, it doesn't matter. If you don't like the zone, you can go to the other zone and they scale most things. There are some level bannings in the core game, but you can do as much or as little as you want in the zones you want to be in. And there'll be individual little stories yeah. dotted about uh, to go and do. So once you adapt to that, it looks a bit like an Ubisoft game at first. Maps full of things. Oh, so map you... barf. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Like there's empty hearts, there's yeah. little vista things, and you look at it and you're like, oh no, is this just like busy work, the MMO? And that was the impression I had in the first half an hour. I'm like, oh, like, okay, I don't particularly like this. Um, but once you get into, once you play it a little bit, it's not that. These are these hearts are stories with events, and they're chains, really good ones. So you bump into one, and then an event will kick off from that, and that might lead you down into a an actual cavern, and then it turns into a lab, and then it turns into other things, and it really leads you on these like mini adventure stories. Each pretty much each one of them, not every single one, but a lot of them have these chain events. Uh, that keep happening. And the cool thing about the way Guild Wars 2 does it, better than FF or WoW, is they design the game in a way that there's people gravitate towards these locations and their world feels more full than any of the other two. All the time. Whether you're playing the core game or a random expansion, huh. there's always people everywhere because they design the world. Uh, and Blue Protocol is going to work in a similar way. Um, the, the Amazon MMO that's coming out next year. Um, in designing the world in a way that gravitates people to certain locations and so you'll approach something and suddenly there's 10 12 and sometimes 100 people all doing a thing uh and then when you get that grasp of it it all makes perfect sense and then you go into the expansions which you can buy in any order and instead of leveling up you have character bonuses that you may or may not want to do simple as that so they had the the most famous one is path of fire which introduced mounts to the game they didn't have mounts for years in guild wars 2 um and they were very terrified of adding mounts because they were kind of different because of that right they don't have the holy trinity quote unquote uh they don't have tank healer dps they kind of do when you're raiding because it's it's way easier to design the game that way and they found that out quickly um but they added mounts and they were nervous about it right people were kind of taking pride that there's no mounts in this game we're playing a real mmo a real open world adventure mounts are going to ruin it lo and behold they have the best mount system of any mmo by miles uh, it's so, so good uh, that you end up leveling these masteries, these extra bonuses, because it's so fun to do it. It's as simple as that. Um, and it's that's all the positive stuff. There are negatives. You know, there are definitely negatives like there are with any MMO, but it's uh, it's an adventure to go on. The stories, 
middling like it has really high points and really low points where like the high points are extraordinary they're almost at shadowbringers quality level on occasion like there's glimpses of getting up there but the low points are really low <laughs> you're like oh god this is this is bad this is really bad but there, there's a lot of effort that's gone into that to make it work um i'm a big proponent of it i think it's um, as a sing certainly as a casual mmo it, everything pretty much everything is drop in drop out like they stopped making dungeons and made these fractals instead which take a few minutes and you could drop in drop out uh anytime you want uh to get those get something done in that game and you oh. don't have to pay monthly either which is nice oh that's that, that was what got me into the first guild wars because all my friends were playing wow and i'm like i i'm not paying monthly for an online game that's insane <laughs> All committing to it. their raiding died, you know, uh, which is interesting because um, they obviously people expected raids. It's an MMO, right? It's a fantasy MMO. There should be raids, and they made raids, and they've stopped making them now. Uh, it just did not work for the Guild Wars Two audience. For and I, yeah, I've just finished them all. Um, instead, they moved to much more trial style. You know, one-off bosses in a singular environment, which uh, take much less time um can be much more focused thematically and also that generally the commitment is not there like you would need for a multi-boss raid uh so they they've gone in that direction i i love the i love the single boss trials in final fantasy 14 and it was something that th th i've i've experienced a lot in 14 uh time and time again being impressed by something i never knew i wanted um some of it was something that i had been publicly averse to beforehand which was like uh player housing i'm like I don't give a shit that WoW doesn't have it. I don't want it. And then I, I we got our first house in 14. And I was like, yo, this rules. This is yep. this is great. And I love it. And I, I still, to, you know, to this, I still idle in my room a lot, just messing with shit. Yeah, uh, if, uh, I can't imagine. I don't I didn't know that not logging in and out at the guild house was not normal. Because that's once we had that guild house, uh, and it was very popular, not just because I was streaming, but because there was a good community there. So you would, every day there was 20, 30 people in the garden, people in the house, just doing stuff at any time of the day. You could log in, in the middle of the night and they're all chilling, they're all up to something. Like the amount of people who play FF14 and don't play the game is pretty extraordinary. <laughs> like there's a very large amount of people who play FF14 and do not play the game. They, they oh, just sit. Playing their own game. Yeah. <laughs> they play their own game. Yeah, they're just doing their own thing. We have it's the, a great life simulator if you want it to be. Yeah, we have the dancing mm -hmm. pope on our server that just dances all day. There's a guy every night that works to put a little floating globe inside himself so he's radiant and he can stand in the middle of Ulda and just kind of glow for a bit. Every night I see him there. Cast but, the characters. But there are those things that like you just didn't notice along the way, like no talent points. And you just kind of I was maybe like level forty five or so, and I was like, wait a minute. I haven't like customized my character at all. Do I do this at any point? Do I do I get to? And you just don't care because the multi jobs and getting to experience the whole game on one character. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't clock it to level ten. I what? thought uh, to level ten we get our first talent point. Yeah, right. I always play right? these games super blind. At level ten, ticked over, and I'm like, so where's my talent point? And I'm like, it can't be at level twenty. <laughs> and I look over to the chat, and they're just <laughs> Pepe laughing. And I read between the lines like, is there really no talent points in this game? huh what a weird choice but yeah, um, you know it works for them i'm not looking up a build this is so strange like mm -hmm. what, what is what is this what do you mean it's not figured well technically it's figured out because every every dark knight is the same dark knight every sage is the same sage um and that it, it took me a little bit to get over it. and in a way i still don't think i have i i you must have loved it if you were uh, uh breaking the eula by jumping on other people's wow accounts and playing their characters um <laughs> but uh i I've always been really attached to my main and wow. And I, I still have a little bit of that in final fantasy 14. I think of myself as a dark knight and nothing else. I play other oh, jobs, really? but I'm, I'm the opposite. I'm really, really like married to my character as a dark knight. Like, yeah. So also opposite like here. it's, it's straight up. Like is how I always wanted like blood DK to feel. I, I love tanking. I, and, and death knight being a Warcraft three fanboy, I was so excited for, I've never stuck with Death Knight. I fall off of it every single time. I don't like blood tanking at all. Um, Getting one love, shot randomly. Big sad. Yeah, I love Dark Knight in 14. I freaking love it. So, yeah, we like putting uh, Blackest Knight up and then hearing that wonderful jingle. It, 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 you it did is, good. It's, it's constant serotonin. Yeah, you every did time, good. Every time your Blackest Knight triggers, it's just like, ooh, I'm a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> I did a good... I didn't just randomly press it. Uh -huh. I knew I didn't. Uh, but I, I'm married... 
in, in World of Warcraft, I don't care about any of my characters, really. I have a bit of a fondness for my warrior, because uh, he's how I started back in the day. But I played so many multi-classes, and I have every class um, that I was never married to one. Like, one expansion, I'm playing one. One expansion, I'm playing another. And these all these rare rewards are all dotted around on different characters at this point. Like, uh, historically, they're not merged. In FF, though, I am completely married to my character, as my character is the day I made it, which I definitely made for fun. It has the goofiest Michael Sarah face. It's like nine feet tall. It <laughs> looks ridiculous. Uh, it, ha- it looks, my character looks like the most uninterested, bored, not listening person in every cutscene that drool might as well be pouring out his mouth. And that's how I came up with the voice for my character was just, ha uh-huh. ha, okay. <laughs> Because that's, like, no matter what's going on, like, Minfilia is like, the world is ending, that's, the calamity is upon us, warrior of light, please say, I'm like, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> and, like, just goes <laughs> off and does these things. And then I did Fantasia. Um, I think we had a sub-goal for it or something. Uh, I, so, I fantasia to something, or maybe it was for a party. And then and, and during the party or whatever, it was fine. And then the next day, I went to log in to play. And I was like, this is not my character, like, at all. I need to change it back immediately. Like, and it felt weird. It felt uncomfortable. And I've always done that. I've fantasied a bunch of times for certain events. I always go back. But I'm not married to a single job. Like, I play Scholar mostly, but I, I'll play anything and it doesn't matter. Because I always make them honey yellow. Uh, so they all kind of look the same, although they're doing different things, because that's my character. That's that's the floor inspector, which is what my chat named my character. I gave it a goofy <laughs> name because I thought I was going to play for five days, so I let them pick the name. Sure. I was like, who cares? We're going to delete this character on Friday. Who, who cares whatsoever? <laughs> I, I made my character alone because we didn't even know we were going to stream it. We wanted to finally take our first step into making like proper YouTube videos because we were doing podcasts for over a decade. And... Kyle had, Kyle's the one who convinced me to finally try 14. Um, but when did you get in? Kyle? Ky- oh, I was, uh, I tried two years through, oh, no, another year's passed now. So three years ago, because I started Gridania and I was like, oh, I don't know about this. But I had a friend who was shooting me pictures of Amarat, of bosses and Shadowbringers, and just be like, Spoilers. you're never going to play. You'll never, you said you'd never play this. You keep playing WoW. So I'm just going to spoil you because you don't give a damn anymore. And someday this <laughs> building might matter to you. I'm making this sound more aggressive. John's a great guy, but he, he yeah. had given <laughs> up and was just like, you guys will never experience it. Here's a picture of Shen Ryu. Like, I don't care anymore. This game is awesome and I want to talk about it. And no one I know plays this. So I'm like, all oh, right, that's I'm, fair. I'm fine. That person, okay. by the way, has become a champion because he he now has the name the uh, for in our community the MS Curator because he gives us recommended stopping points on our MSQ streams. Oh, I am. Yeah, that's rough. I felt bad for uh, my viewers because obviously I was full blind and I don't know what's coming next. And they know I usually stop streaming around three, four o'clock in the afternoon, and they start getting antsy and it was kind of funny during the msq <laughs> is seeing people start to get kind of antsy in that they know i'm going to finish soon but i'm almost at this and i started getting messages in discord messages like you should stop now like you should really stop and i was like why and they're like just trust us there's something going to happen that's like three hours long after this and we can't have it interrupted i'm sorry like there is no way in hell we are letting you interrupt what's about to happen so stop just log off and disappear yeah. out of our lives i'm like oh, okay uh this is getting a bit serious now <laughs> like i didn't realize how invested uh, people were and i was like yeah you, you can't play right now but uh Amarot in particular and one of the reasons we made the display for it uh my favorite game of all time like single player is bioshock Nice, a lot of my audience knew that yeah like I, I, that intro is still in my top three intros to a video game of all time um and um obviously um, rapture and amarok look similar and they kept including like uh, my team and all my long-term viewers they kept amarok secrets for the whole playthrough i had no idea amarok existed or what it was Oh, nice. and yeah, yeah one nice. of the most I swear to you guys, it was one of the most men- to, to talk this. I put this in context of not like a, a a brag thing, more like how good this the community is around people joining Final Fantasy fourteen, and you guys are experiencing it now, and I'm kind of jealous. Is how protective they are, but also want you to have the best time. Like that, that's why they're telling you to stop. It's like what's about to happen is something amazing, and we want to make sure that you one get to experience it fully, and you don't have to go halfway through. 
Um, and Amarok, they all kept secret. And what happened as you're going towards the tunnel to, tunnel to Amarok is the audience got so excited, it started lagging the stream. Oh, wow. And it, was actually, it was actually becoming a real problem. Um, with like people like sending subscriptions, uh, emotes, all that kind of stuff was happening. And my stream started to actually like lag, which never happens. Um, and it got to the point where halfway through the tunnel, I was like, I don't know what's going on with you guys right now, but you need to stop because you're actually lagging the stream. You're actually causing problems. And I got up <clears throat> and walked away for like a couple of minutes just to let everything settle down. And then I came back and it did not stop. It carried on and it got worse and worse and worse. So I think we had like 10 FPS and I had to start turning things off uh, before we got to what eventually was Amarot. And I didn't know what was coming. And then uh, we walk out over the cliff edge and you see Amarot and then it all hit me at once. And I did start crying. Uh, I was like, fuck, you guys kept this secret? And like, uh, I could I was talking to my very close friends and they're like, yep, we knew this day would come one day and we've been waiting for it ever since. And I'm like, that is so cool. And I've never experienced that in any game ever. Like to have that kind of uh, curated and patience from your audience to not be like, has he got to Amarot yet? Um, you know, in their brain as a streamer, you're like, so what's Amarot? Uh, no, shh. You know, that kind of conversation <laughs> happening. Like <laughs> they, they kept it completely clean uh, yeah. for what I think was the best streaming and gaming moment I'd ever had in my life. It That's was incredible. Awesome. We, yeah, we, we, read every, we, we read every super chat that we get. Um, like, because... Uh, we're it's just kind of how it's always gone but now our audience is is delightfully larger than we ever thought it would get and i would think we ended up having to do like a four hour dedicated thank you stream after emerald <laughs> like, yep. and 5-0 the end of 5-0 was ridiculous we which is something we never saw coming um which then gets fun. It, it's fun in its own way after the fact, because just from the supers, you can be like, oh, this is when this was pouring in, because you can tell what moment was happening. <laughs> yep. um, yeah, you absolutely can. Well, and, uh... and, and they customize it for you, too, because my version of that was, I was like, oh, man, I love Gaius. I love Shadowhunter. Oh, he's such a badass. And everyone's like, have you heard Kyle's a dad? Like, weapon trial's coming oh. up. He's going to be so excited. Dad, 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 dad. He's a dad now. <laughs> Burn out the badge. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was not ready for that. Um, yeah. It was something I, I, with the milk. It and was the something. I have two kids. It, it messed me up a little bit. Yeah. It didn't, doesn't brought to tears. I just wanted to butcher, murder, and kill. Uh, but a close friend of mine, Jeeth, um, he is a father of a, a young daughter. Uh, and he's very he's he's also a former lawyer who dealt with like child abuse cases and things like oh, that geez. and he was on his ff journey <laughs> and it was coming up and we were like oh no oh jeez uh but also like here we go you know because right. that is the that is the reaction is like oh god this is gonna mess him up but also like it's starting and here we go and it did completely mess him up and we're having similar now with other friends who have uh started started on the pathway and they're getting to those points you know uh, they're reaching those those moments it's like oh i jealous i am jealous because that story is so good um obviously obviously you guys haven't played endwalker but certainly shadowbringers especially it hits so many high notes based on everything that began back in a realm reborn and that it's it's inc i do rate it as the number one rpg story i've, I've ever played is because it took years to get there. Like, uh, Ishikawa, the writer, is just a legend. Like, there's things that pay off that happened five or six years ago. And when they pay off, you're like, oh, that's so good. And then none of the characters are written like idiots, which I really appreciate so much. Like, they all, they all fulfill their purpose and go on their merry way. Well, and you know, when, it, when they fail, they fail for their character traits, like, in a way that pays off, not in a... a don't go in the room alone horror movie style like mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not because it's it does, never feels like it because the plot demands it well like, no, I, I think Bankrid's um, a great example of that in Shadowbringers. like we spent the whole first half being like come on come on get rid of your emotional constipation but then he's laying I, there I, on the floor i was so mad i was just visibly pissed off at Bankrid for most of shadow that was my big like emotional moment was when he's laying on the floor thanking you know reen for being and philly being part of his life and i'm like oh god <laughs> go should in there. he have died well, well, uh, well should I don't he have think died? he should have. I, I've, I've taken flack for because I was like, I'm surprised they didn't kill him. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I have since tried to walk it back a little bit because I, I said, listen, I could see a world where, where that happens. Yep. In the last couple of weeks, I've gotten more aggressive on that fact because some people are a little mad that I saw some of the Dawn Trail trailer. Oh. And they're like, there's spoilers for who lives. And my take is if they didn't have the balls to kill Thancred and Shadowbringers, none of the Scions are ever going to die in this game. <laughs> That's exactly why they should have killed him because now they seemingly have immortality, right? That's, yes, they are yeah, very, it, very safe characters. And also, I would like to remind everybody about the Shadowbringers trailer where there's a child and they point to that child and say Menphilia. And so they could just be taking me for a ride. That that might just be, I don't know, an Assian reanimating one of the Scion's bodies. I don't know that. I don't, that could be an Assian sipping out of a pineapple. You don't know? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You don't know. You know. But we the, all the, know. The, the trailers are extremely misleading intentionally. Like, I Yeah, my first time experiencing them. I could have watched this. I uh, for I didn't. I could have watched the Shadowbringers trailer when I started Realm Reborn. I would have just been like, w "How does Menphilia become a child?" That would have been my only thought. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a time travel expansion. Is what I thought. I, 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 I you end up being kind of right. The thought I, so what, crossed my mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what I thought because. Uh, Moronically, the Shadowbringers trailer is a fantastic, fantastic piece of work. But when I didn't notice, I think I looked at the chat or something like that, is when the hood pulls back to reveal that Matoya is your solar, I looked at the chat and then I was utterly convinced there was a time travel because Matoya looked young and Minfilia was young. And people were just like, he missed it. He missed that it. it's just taller. He missed it. I can't believe he missed it. And I'm like, God, so Matoya's here. And I'm in Philly's back. And they're all young. And the science must have been taken back in time and all this. And they're just like, he's such a moron. No, it's clearly just taller. And they even show her later in the trailer, which I then took as just being just taller was there as well. Uh, so I was like, oh, the Scions <laughs> travel back in time to revisit Matoya. I was going on these theories, like these mad theories of like, we're going back in time to seek younger Matoya because she has the answers that she's forgotten in her old age or something like that uh, was going on. And they're just like, no, they clearly showed that it's just your solar called Matoya. And I'm like, wait, oh, wait. Yeah. And y'all give us crap for our theories being wrong? Damn, that is like, that's a but still right. But <laughs> oh, no, I, but still. I was on one. <laughs> but you were on the time travel train and you were kind of right in the wrong way. And that's the joy that the game has of being so multifaceted like there are parts of i think it's really to me like stormblood handles some crazy heavy topics and yet later on yeah i think and it's a journey yeah. that you want to go on yeah certainly in the patches and uh yatsu you mm -hmm. and all that and it's a journey that you still want to go on and look how many people even just at in this podcast are having different experiences with one story and yeah. allowing that to affect them in different ways and having different moments like that's the the joy of it yeah, because Stormblood for me was one of the weakest parts of the FF14 story, the MSQ, not the post MSQ. Um, and I really felt, and it's one of the things I'd like to talk to them about, is that they sat down after they released the MSQ, because there's some real Deus Ex Machina nonsense that you'd, you you kind of hold the story of FF14 on such a pedestal that it shouldn't be resorting to weird, stupid get out of jail free cards, because everything's been written so well up to that point that it shouldn't be necessary. And I think in that one, we had like Arianje just turn up in the middle of the desert with his magic wand, like not even been seen for the whole expansion. He's like, oh, I stumbled into you here. Here is the magic wand to deal with the thing. Bye, I'm off again. Or Astinian just <laughs> drops out of the sky on occasion when you need him because they got into an unwinnable situation. It's like, Astinian from the sky, like some wrestling maneuver. And then he's like, and I've gone again. Bye. It was so dumb. And I was like, what's happening here? Like, And I didn't like the way Ida was written at all. And uh, as, there's so much weird stuff going on. That's ah, really okay, uncomfortable. okay. Do, do I have you to blame for the for the least hate? Who do I blame for the least hate? Oh, I love <laughs> it now. There's so many least haters in our chat. And I want to know what streamer to blame. Uh, uh, I hate early. It was Star Blood lease, terrible. Post MSQ lease, different character. And it, I think they actually had to sit down and say this. Whatever you guys did here was wrong, and we need to fix it uh, because this is not right. At all, because the change between the, the MSQ in Stormblood and the post MSQ is dramatic, like a dramatic stale change in writing. We get the Fordola story, uh, 
lease is completely redone essentially from somebody who seemingly has never been outside of her house before which is what she is in Stormblood. it's like oh my god i don't get what's going on you're like she's been a scion for years she's seen loads of this kind of stuff she clearly knows what's going on oh i don't know maybe why aren't you guys all happy i'm here i'm lease uh, like it's so <laughs> dumb and it's like i'm gonna free all the slaves uh. if, if anyone is listening to this who hasn't played Stormblood, uh it, it sounds dumb when you put that voice on it i i'd like to lease i like lisa's journey good for you <laughs> <laughs> good thank for you. you for I, not caving <laughs> I, I will not retract my statement that it's horrible <laughs> uh but then it, it changes completely like a total change of direction uh later on uh but that was the weakest part i found of the whole journey like uh it was just that's it's bit in storm because they started introducing characters and tension to kill them off hate that because they they're like you said the scions feel very protected uh, so it's like, well, we have to kill somebody. And then, like, in Starblood, they, like, bring in Roger or whatever he's called. He's like, hi, I'm Roger. I'm definitely an important character and not going to die in 20 minutes. And then 20 minutes later, poor Roger dies. Yeah, they did that uh, in Realm of Born, too, with... Uh, mm -hmm. um, oh, my God, I'm blanking on her name. I love her. Uh, not, you girlfriend. hate Nanamo, so it's not that one. What? what? Oh, Moonbreeder? No, no oh, Nanamo should have yeah. stayed dead. Oh, oh yeah, Moonbreeder. Yeah, but yeah. Moonbreeder kind of sucked, so I'm glad she's gone. Oh, I love... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Okay, well, you know... <sighs> You know, I'm already seeing people being like, "Oh, you guys should do this again and have Jesse on too." I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, Mike. I don't think you'll be invited back. Um, <laughs> this has been really fun, but uh, the Moon Breed of slander will not be tolerated. Uh. <laughs> Just saying, Minfilia got a ghost. Horsha Font got eight hundred and fifty thousand ghosts. Where's Moon Breeder at? <laughs> right? They really like took that Horsha Font thread come here i legitimately <laughs> think they forgot about her like i, I legit oh, you think so i think they I legitimately think they forgot. maybe i think moon Breed is the most woefully underutilized great character in this game look you're never hearing of moon breeder ever again get over it yeah she yeah sucks. no my, she was my, brought in just to die my Bye. my uh bring me your booze is that nanamo is the most overloved and overutilized character in this game and moon Breed was just horribly disrespected excuse me yeah yeah not not Nanamo? a moe. Wow. Not a moe is not that interesting. Holy crap. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Sorry. These are dark times to us all. Her yeah. character trait is uh is is Jasmine. It's like, oh, she's so interesting. She likes to sneak out with a hood on. It's like that was the it's Aladdin. Damn. So you didn't like it Aladdin. when she like evolved into a full leader? <laughs> right? Even when Hot Wheels, she helps him out. <laughs> she did the killer to make her interesting. <laughs> <laughs> to kill i wonder if uh we've tried to get confirmation that they actually retconned her death um it to me to me feels like it but i also yeah because really the community like didn't the like character it. that much so yeah it, it kind of feels it kind of feels like a I, I do think it's a little bit of a cop out to bring nanamo back. i'm a big fan of nanamo i like her i, yeah. I like i like how uh, her story played out yeah. but uh moon breeder she did the white crystal thing that's her whole job bye <laughs> and if you're if you're like attractive to worry on jay i think there's something wrong with you because he only likes he only likes dust and fairies wow <laughs> right that's the limit of his wow. excitement is dusty books and fairies like that's yeah. it yeah uh yeah no she she saved that entire part of realm reborn for me no i'm with you on stormblood is 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 definitely slow but i everything from doma castle onward i really enjoyed so i'm what do you think of the suyu storyline you got to like, you yeah, I mean, I've she clearly it. got shot and died, uh, yes. but I didn't believe it. Uh, I was like, they're not, I didn't believe it because they wouldn't kill Gosetsu. So I was definitely huffing the, uh, this is not done by a long shot. But yeah, I think I, that I, whole storyline was one of my favorite they ever did. Uh, yes, yeah, same, same. Mm -hmm. uh, I loved the Atsu storyline. It was, it was uh, dark in all the best ways that didn't feel like it was just for shock value. Like, it didn't feel like it betrayed what is otherwise a pretty uplifting and positive story mm -hmm. um it, it was handled very well i only bring it up because recently uh world of warcraft tried to do something similar with um alex Straza and it did not land because it just doesn't have that care and detail given to it like the ff14 storytellers have they just kind of threw a kind of similar abuse story into a wow text a quest text yeah and it's like uh, and it was it was a bit of an uproar in the wow community of like what are you what's <laughs> like what are we doing here like you can't just throw this in 
uh, out of nowhere. Uh, whereas when you, I was like, okay, I kind of been through a similar story with Suyu, which was way darker and really, really heavy in certain places. Um, but and raised a lot of questions like is it the same person if they haven't got the memory is it that person anymore like can you persecute that person the person still did it raised a lot of discussions certainly with like streams and things like that uh and i'm sure individuals who played it going through their minds like well what's the what's the the correct course here it felt like a black mirror episode essentially um yeah and i've been quoted uh, on stream talking about how i hate amnesia as a story device same because it's usually done so badly though right it's it's literally attributed to soap operas yeah. Like it's attributed to low rent, cheap storytelling. Yeah. And so, yeah, I was like, when it happened, even I, you can probably go back to the streams. I'm sure I was like, oh no, they're doing they're but they do so many interesting things with it. Yeah. It keeps getting worse. That's the thing about it. It keeps getting worse. Like, uh, and that was, uh, I think, uh, uh, the joke we had playing through shadow Shadowbring is like, oh, somebody's happy here. I wonder what's about to happen to them. That's, horrible and grief stricken and nightmare fuel and lo and behold it always did a hundred percent of the time it's like oh are you are you smiling don't want to do that you're probably eating people kyle you look <laughs> you're in your literal big think emote pose what's oh, going I'm, through your i'm head? just enjoying like this is like watching two loki's argue i love it like you two <laughs> you two had the exact same journey we're making content about world of warcraft Watching you two divert on which characters are awful and then come back together. Well, uh, this is all good. This is all great. It's just, it's an amusing show to watch. I'm enjoying my own this show is, this here. Is, I love this, Kenny. This is why I think it's okay <laughs> to talk about what you don't like in Final Fantasy XIV. And, and, and sometimes when I mention something I don't like, it's, some people make me feel like I should have never opened my mouth. Uh, but <laughs> all those people. <laughs> but it's like, aren't we here to get, know, get to know each other? Like, it's all, it's all our tastes at the end of the day. And it's going to vary. So. I think it's it's a tribute to the storytelling. I really do. Like it's um, th that's why you can have these. Can you have these discussions about any character in WoW? Do you like Brawl? I Maybe guess. Jaina's Jana. like, had some pretty cool arcs over the years when they remembered she was a character. Um, exactly. So these characters like disappear. They come back. Yeah. Like where is Kadgar right now? I don't know. Uh, I, I, like I people bring up Walker three a lot. I think Jaina was the best part of BFA. Like I, I, I'll, I'll go to bad because BFA started the much maligned uh, Sylvanas arc, which I don't like and kind of ruined it's one bad. of my favorite characters. Yeah. Um, but I do really like the Jaina stuff in BFA. I think there's one of the better WoW arcs is is Jaina in Battle for Azeroth. In my opinion, flying boats is dumb. Uh, I'm on, I'm with, I'm with Carl. Uh, <laughs> but I, I mean, the daughter of the sea video is great. Uh, but the actual Jaina stuff, I've never been a fan of. Uh, it, within the, if you think about it for too long, yes, it starts to fall apart. But it's just cool, rule of cool, rule of cool. Uh, I think the flying boat is cool. Well, it, yeah, that's the thing, right? It bits and bobs. It's fine. It, like their cutscenes are great. I can't deny BFA's intro announcement video uh, is one oh, of the best weird. video game trailers of all time. It's awesome. It's, it's so good. So good. But I have to separate that out from the game. <laughs> let's put yeah, it like over it's, here and it but it like doesn't even like tie into the story that well because like the coolest part is when sylvanas goes banshee and yells for the horde and it's like she's just using the horde that entire expansion she doesn't yep. believe in any of that and then you go back to like the old stories and she actually gave a shit about the forsaken and she was actually a pragmatic ruler and they just threw all that out the window for the sake of making a crazy daenerys storyline well they, they she, she you know she had a mixed brain situation i don't think if uh, if you follow along with it and she had personality splits and this bit was over here but, uh, the, the crazy thing about it though is like how well it worked for content creation there are so many holes in world of warcraft in this book and that book that there are channels entirely dedicated to world of warcraft lore whereas final fantasy doesn't really have that because it's all just kind of in the game and people go well what's the story of so well go go new game plus it you know just, go play it go yeah, play you the don't game. need it explaining to you at all if you didn't it, i mean there are certain elements we picked up on that um with discussion that people didn't get uh which was cool like the um but the one people always come back to is these similarities between um uh crap i'm forgetting the names and I'm, I'm gonna get shouted at for it but uh in heaven's ward uh leader harry spelger and uh the leader of Nidhogg. ishgard by the end nope. no oh. no no no, no, no. Oh, um emmerich. emmerich emmerich yeah yeah uh is that what turns the tide of the dragon war and convinces harry spelger to get involved is that if uh harry spelger was they're too different human and dragon they live different lives and emmerich ties them together 
by saying we both actually live similar lives in terms of what we've been through with our parents and the effects we've had on one another and like that 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 turns it around it's like we're actually really similar that conversation that cutscene is one of my favorite in the entire game uh is eric explaining that actually we're really similar in this case and doing it really well and like those moments some people didn't get like how deep that conversation is because it's like two lines because it's told in a really concise no fatty kind of way without forcing it down your throat you know like this is what he means here uh it's it works either way and uh that got a lot of, a lot of people got more out of the game after that point like oh i see like where this is coming from and it's fantastic and i can't relate that to many other games i have some of those moments in divinity which is why it reached my um number two spot in my like best rpgs of all time and like chrono trigger the same which is like that those are my top three it's like shadowbringers divinity and chrono trigger um is there's a lot of subtlety in how the story is told to not bash you over the head with it and treat you like a moron and those moments i think are the best because they prompt so much discussion which is why we're here now and also don't require guides and things to tell you about what's going on um i would probably need a guide on the wow story like not dragonfly i've kept kind of up to date on that but for everything else i don't know what happened in half of those games i killed nzoth i killed all those bosses but i don't really know why <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, uh, i don't really care either <laughs> The finer nuance, yeah, yeah. There, there's a time where I read the WoW books and I was invested, and then all the Sylvana stuff happened. And I'm like, oh, I feel like I felt like a my investment wasn't paid off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's disappointing, right? Yeah, yeah. I had a similar thing with uh, the final Star Wars movie. Like I was reading all the new canon books and everything, and then you literally, yeah, they, they just like threw lore out the window for that third movie. <laughs> I'm so glad I've never been a big Star Wars fan because uh, some of blockbusters, those movies were great. <laughs> it's complete trash. It was my just, way. But yeah, you're Pop good. You're movie, good. It was awesome. <laughs> it was so good. I was like, oh god, Leia can fly in space. Sick. That's really cool. <laughs> what production <laughs> this value? Dope. This is wonderful. Yeah, man. This is awesome. And oh god, grenades can drop like gravity in space. I didn't know that, but whatever. We're gonna walk that's into a... a ship now. Sick. We should have just done that. Oh, so that's ago. pretty that's pretty consistent with how much they give a shit about how physics work in that's their That's a in good way to live. I like that <laughs> lifestyle. Well done. Yeah, yeah. I watched it like Fast and the Furious. Like this, this is awesome. This is so nice. like I'm a because I'm a Star Trek guy. Like big I I'm so angry oh. at the Star Trek movies, big time. I hate them so much. But with Star Wars, I never really enjoyed it that much. Uh, so yeah, every movie I'm just like, oh, cool. <laughs> Why not? Let's have Han Solo meet Chewie in a prison for some reason. That is when the science so is doing the best, in my opinion, is when they're Star Trekking. Your opinion, Mr. Data, kind of stuff. Yeah, you can see why I love it so much. Yeah. I'm like, no, this is the good bit. Like, this is about civil issues. <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> but can we blow? Oh, shh. He's talking Politics. about racism. Yeah, this is about racism. Let's, 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 how's Alfie going to handle this one? Let's, uh, let's see if Merle actually realizes that she's kind of been the instrument of war all along. Oh my God, she did. <laughs> she did, and she realizes it, and she's still awesome. Yeah, Why he's kind of send his feet like that? I don't know. Yeah, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> yep. It's gonna be fine. Uh, it's it's yep. vulgar totally subtlety, good. particularly the uh, the meeting with all the beast <laughs> tribes, and there's the pan, and it's a joke. Like, so you can have Emmerich go, "I beg your pardon," but every single leader has a different facial expression to the fishmen yelling because they all yep. have different experiences with fishmen, and it, it's vulgar. There's no other word for it. Like, it is genius, and that's the kind yeah. of subtlety you want. <laughs> absolutely uh it's uh something i've enjoyed all the way through and only reason i actually took part in any of the trade crafts in final fantasy 14 was for the story um i haven't done them all i'm still missing a tank uh but it was literally i want more of the story like when the story eventually came to an end for me and it's like i'm done i just need more and that's when i started looking at the beast tribes and things like that uh, not really craving any of the rewards it was just that i wanted to experience more story uh yeah. and enjoy it and don't don't please don't let it go away <laughs> that's, that's all is it <laughs> is it over now no it's uh I ne there's nothing worse and you guys are getting there oh you guys are in for a rough time uh when you reach the end and now you have to wait with the rest of the people until the next part of the story comes out and it's I think you're awful. grossly underestimating how long we can take to get through a zone well oh, i'm a stalling andy big time <laughs> but it, it, it will run out eventually i actually genuinely considered not playing ff14 again for like three years uh i actually we actually talked about it because coming back and having it all waiting for you to go along for that ride is so good yeah it's so uh, when it's piecemeal you do forget things that happen in the last bit 
uh you know because you've had such a long yeah. break between them like you do forget and you don't get that recap so you're like okay and who is this guy again like thankfully i do pay a lot of attention to it because i enjoy it but like on occasion you're like oh yeah okay i remember what they were doing last time uh yeah it's it's a little tricky yeah, Plus the well, spoiler really... delay you have to worry about you know you don't get to yeah. play on release you gotta give it two weeks or so uh, I think we're down to a week now. We agreed two weeks. If you hadn't done it in two weeks, you were just a slacker and you deserved it. Oh, <laughs> so, I saw the two yeah, week we rule. Tried two yeah. Weeks of, the Twitter rule. Yeah, we had a two week rule, uh, but I think we've changed it to a week now. Cause, so, yeah. so Don Trail, you're one week later, we can tune in and watch, watch Preach playing? Oh, I, we haven't talked about Don Trail yet, actually. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do for Don Trail, actually. That's that's a good question, and that's actually prompted my brain to start firing in a weird way. Uh, so we've got I, I some. Don't know. We took some questions from uh, our our members only Discord, uh, which we do anytime we have a guest. Uh, uh, Jesse has been uh, the receiving end of the salvo of questions before, and we got way too many. Um, people are extremely stoked that you're here, awesome. so we're very sorry, everybody. There's no way we could have asked all these questions, but some of them are on topic for what we're talking about right here. So I figured we would just kind of s- slide some of these in here. Um, because we got a question from Midnight in our Discord, uh, and it's pretty, I think, uh, on topic with what we're talking about. It said, content creators get fear-monger to hell and back about finishing the MSQ, uh, you know, the MSQ bump, the MSQ Andy's leaving on mass, et cetera. How was your experience finishing the MSQ in terms of viewership and content creation? Um, okay, it was, um, I have a very laissez-faire attitude towards this stuff. Um, is I really didn't care. I Generally speaking, if I'm streaming a game and I'm having fun, as long as I'm not tanking my career entirely uh, in terms of like everybody's just turning off and we're, we're in a really bad way, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. And But that's not a position most content creators are in uh, to be able to do that. I'm very fortunate to be able to do that. Uh, so for me it was fine and that actually started to pay off what i generally find with content creation and doing final fantasy 14 specifically is once you kind of set the ground rules uh which you set yourself and what you're comfortable doing is very quickly the audience uh who's along for the ride will kind of adjust around you it's like okay uh if you're gonna not do msq now to do all the extremes for example i'll check in like every day until you're doing the msq but i'm probably gonna leave it after that point uh oh you're still doing extremes okay i'll go away uh oh you're doing hildebrand i don't like hildebrand i'm gonna go away oh you're doing the raid series before you move on i'm gonna go away that's fine that's totally good um there were the the other effect happened to us though is like when we got back to the story the um it was difficult and amazing at the same time so i think around shadowbringers we had we were like getting like between 13 and seventeen thousand viewers who were watching along for the msq which was it was mad, uh, but then you get a weird thing that happens with content creation, especially if you've got a very close community, is your long-term members are starting to get a little frustrated because there's too many people around. And the atmosphere you've built with maybe two to 4,000 people is gone for the moment. And most of them understood that what, it, what, was, what was going on, uh, and it was you know that kind of situation, but it's, it could be a mixed bag. I'm fortunate in that. However, I do know very close friends of mine um, who were like, who I recommended the game to, and that's Cabal. Uh, and I'm not mad at these guys, but they generally, they, they do what we've talked about here today, right? Which is, I wish I could experience that story again. Like, if I could wipe my memory, I would do it over and over again and wipe my memory and play it again and just do it over and over again. I would absolutely do that if I had the ability to play through that story again. And you can't, it's impossible. So there's a lot of people who watch live streamers play through the MSQ so they can somewhat relive that through them, right? You're getting that extra, you're getting a little bit of that back. Um, and they can be angry when you don't react in the same way. Um, you said you notoriously don't cry and there are moments that certain parts of the MSQ where people cry. Uh, and if you don't react in that way, they can get very, very upset. Like you're clearly not into the story. You don't care. You're putting it on for show. And I see this a lot in the FF14 community is, uh, oh, well, they didn't react in a certain way to X story moment. They're, they're just doing it because it gains viewers. Uh, because typically speaking, streaming the FF14 story does get viewers. But my feeling on that is the viewers can also tell if you're like scamming them, you know, if you're just playing yes. it because you're hoping to get some subs and stuff. Um, and if you are actually genuinely enjoying yourself, it comes through pretty clearly. Um, but they stopped streaming the game. Uh, because they couldn't 
enjoy what they wanted to do. Some some people wanted to try a different job out. But that means kind of starting back and doing job stories and all that. And you're going to hold the story. And they were getting such a lot of like, when MSQ, when MSQ, that they gave up on the game. And that can very much happen as well, uh, depending on your personality as a streamer. Uh, so it's something I... When I know one of my friends um, is getting into it, I've always warned them, one, you're going to get a massive bump in viewership, probably. Um, but it's also going to go away. Because once that story's done, they're disappearing. Like, that's what happens. They're along for the ride for the story because they want to relive it. They want to live vicariously through you. And they'll enjoy it, and they'll be great while they're there. But once that story's done, they're out of there again. Uh, so don't do anything crazy during that period of time. <laughs> like, it's certainly if you're earning a lot more money than you're typically used to as a content creator, like, don't do anything crazy. Don't go out and, you know, buy a car or whatever. Like, that's, that's going to be a problem. Oh, uh, so I should take this Ferrari out of my cart. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Like, you know, just be careful depending on what the bump is compared to what you're used to compared to what's actually happening. Um, I don't think it's going to last forever. It's not. Like, it's just not going to do that. So you, you take that information. Um, but other than that, it's, up to the, it's always up to the streamer to manage... Uh, the, the the expectations of the audience. I, I, my recommendation would be just be very clear about what it is you're doing. If you're going to do all the extremes, tell them you're going to do all the extremes. Like, don't surprise people with it or like be, oh, maybe tomorrow we'll do MSQ because that's, I think, how you, know, you don't want to lose those viewers. So you, you, some people are like, oh, but maybe we'll do it tomorrow. Maybe we'll do it then. They're not going to. They're fully intending to do the extremes or go and learn a new job or something like that. But just lay down the plan and be okay with people coming and going. That's, that's yeah. what I'd say. That's what we, we, we're starting it back up next week and we didn't schedule that stream until a couple of days ago. Cause we were just like, mm -hmm. we're not sure we're going to, we're going to fan fest. We're coming back. We don't know how long that's all going to take. And so that we were just tried to be clear about that. Like we don't want to put a date that's three weeks out after fan fest and then realize we can't make that date and then bum everyone out. Yeah. So just tell people the truth. Uh, it always works out. Uh, especially cause we're recorded near enough every we, we talked about it this morning because of the linus tech tip situation that's happening as we're recording this uh is everything we do is recorded there's no point in lying <laughs> because <Yeah. laughs> everything you say trying to remember lies in this business is impossible and the people who do it always get caught <laughs> out and you can see those drama frogs that live in this world of like hey, somebody will find the clip and be like yep <laughs> yep, yep. This is when he said this. This is when he said this. Like, it's just so not worth it at all to try and remember that stuff. I'm recorded. I mean, outside of Twitch, we make YouTube as well. So, like, I'm recorded like more than 50% of my day of every day of my life is recorded. And so, like, <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember everything I've said in that day. So, the, the best plan is to s tell the truth. And if somebody says something to you, like, oh, didn't you say this? And it just sounds completely wrong, then probably you didn't say that. And you're okay. That's how I do it. Uh, so, I mean, it sounds like the it's kind fun. of Yoshi P go play other games philosophy and the quitting World of Warcraft really kind of work for you. Now you're variety streaming, but also with an MMO edge to it. Yeah, you got Baldur's Gate coming up like that, but it sounds like a pretty healthy place. Uh, we, we play whatever we want. Um, we did the only MMO edge we've had recently is we did a project MMO because I had so much fun right. with Final Fantasy. I was like, we should really look into what the other mmos are offering that are still popular and around because now i realize the difference between the two games on the face of it they look the same you know like the gameplay style it's tab targeting you get spells health bars mana whatever um and guild boss 2 looks the same and etc etc eso looks the same star wars looks the same etc so I, uh, the only reason we had an mmo leaning recently is because we did project mmo to complete all the raids in these different games uh go in blind play through it and finish all the raids that was the goal and i think we're a bit mmo burned out at the moment uh is how i, I feel I believe it. And again, <laughs> yeah I, I, i'm the streamer ultimately it's like um, Can't imagine okay why. yeah i remember we're burned out so we're, we're playing satisfactory uh we're playing Ooh, nice. uh, the, i'm actually the current goal is to finish all the single player mainline final fantasies because i'd never played any of them 14 was my first final fantasy game um so I said, we should find out where, how... The, I'm always interested in the history. That's what I did with World of Warcraft, is the, tracking the history of how we got from A to B. It's not as simple as, uh, oh, this is a new change. It started somewhere a long time ago, like flying mounts and problems and things like that. Um, so I wanted to know where, this, where did this franchise come from that people are like clamoring at the hilt for, for everything. Like 16 is coming out as one of the hypest games of the year. 
Uh, how did we get here? And so we've been jumping around because they're not chronological. So we're doing 12 right now. Uh, we're going to play an MMO on Saturday, but then we're doing something else like for the following week. Uh, playing a lot of Path of Exile whenever we get chance. So yeah, I, I'm lucky to be in that position because it was World of Warcraft only, which is a horrible place to be because some days even the most avid fans do not want to play that game. Uh, you know, I want a day off. It's as simple as that. And you can't if you're a streamer and you, that's your one game. You got to play it. Because that's what everyone's expecting you to play, and it sucks. <laughs> it really, really sucks. And seven and years. Fact, yeah, seven years. Yeah, seven storm. years. <laughs> At least there's uh, a clip of OK Mage, who's a close friend of mine. Uh, she's a fellow caster for the Race to World First, and I've been pushing her to play Final Fantasy for like two years, or maybe a year a bit, actually. And she finally jumped in, and on the first day, she like broke down. She had more viewers than she'd ever had by multiples, and she was having a really fun time. And she just, it came out like I've been playing World of Warcraft relentlessly on stream because that's what everybody expects of me. And that's it. And if I don't play it, people are going to disappear and leave me and stuff like that. And it's, I, I had the same thoughts. Like, it's not just on her. It, I had the same thoughts as well. As, but that's why I told my team when we were stopping making WoW content, this might be a jobs. I don't know what happens from here. Uh, I really don't. But it worked out really well. And I'm very fortunate for that. Uh, and to see other people experience it too is great. Uh, it really is superb. Yeah, we recently, uh, we, we need to figure out how the hell we're going to continue moving through it, but we recently did some Baldur's Gate 3 streams, and they mm -hmm. went really well. Yep. Um, really, really well, I, uh, which I, I guess I feel, now I feel like I shouldn't be so surprised, but obviously we're worried too. We have the same concerns everyone has when you yeah. are known for streaming a game or making content about a game, and then like, what well, what happens next? Um, yep. But yeah, I mean, uh, Kyle is a massive D&D &D nerd, and... Uh, this the co-op in this game is freaking incredible so no spoilers please no no or i will ruin endwalker right here right now <laughs> we're moving slower through this than through the msq so <laughs> i don't think we can really spoil much other than, i will crush everything yeah there are goblins i can confirm there are goblins damn it wow yeah you're taking a big risk there yeah yeah, there, there might be a trap. There might be a trap you need to worry about. Oh, that's actually a big problem for me. I have an issue with traps in video games. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I tend to I find too. them all. Yeah, I'm pretty good at finding them uh, every single time. But I'm looking forward to it because uh, I'm also in a good position. Is that I know it's I saw on Twitter it's getting some hot fixes and stuff. Ballad Cake Three. So when I get it, it'll be perfect. Like I'll have the yeah. best possible there version. There you go. Of it. Yes, that's my thoughts on it. I'm gonna. I mean, thankfully, you two worked together to get a duo going. So I had so many offers to do like four player, and I'm like, that game is probably gonna be 200 hours. Are we really gonna schedule all our streams for 200 hours where we're all together all the time without breaking it up so much the audience loses interest because it's like we've got yeah. one stream a week or whatever. Like that's not gonna happen. Yeah, that uh, many people trying to go through a game together. I did it for yeah, divinity. It was glorious, but I would not do it again. I wouldn't do it on stream. Uh, off stream? Sure. Like, we could play Thursday, we could play Wednesday, or whatever, like a raid night, essentially. Totally. Yeah, absolutely do that. Let's organize it with other streamers, especially ones that live in the US. Not happening. <laughs> Any circumstances. <laughs> that is not a happening. Time zone. Uh, another question we got, uh, which, uh, you know, uh, we're including for incredibly selfish purposes. Vernacular Ham in our Discord wants to know, uh, do you have any advice for streamers that may be entering Endwalker for the first time? No one in particular. Uh, if you have gotten through the other expansions, it's just the same. Like, there's going to be no difference. Um, I don't think there's, it's any different than going in. For, for the FF14 community who likes to watch the streams, they treat Endwalker just like they treat Heavensward. There's no, uh, I didn't have any difference in the way people uh, treated Endwalker other than than they did in Heaven's Ward or Realm Reborn or anything else. That might be unique to me, but I don't think so. I think you guys had a similar experience, right? I would imagine, yeah. Mm. yeah. People seem stoked. Yeah. Stoked and don't want to spoil. Like, <laughs> the FF14 community looks after each other, like, a lot. They police themselves for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> did you guys um, not have that? What? Uh, police them? So oh, no, oh, yeah, absolutely. for the most part. Yeah. Uh, our mods are... Uh, exceptionally fast on the trigger. Oh, okay. We had the smile police. So, because yes. I obviously people want to know what you're thinking, which can come across to a new viewer as like, are you asking a question? Uh, so, you know, it's like, is this Kraha? 
maybe you know uh and the smile police uh jumps in quickly and they fill the chat like they're doing now with smiley faces so that no answer could ever be read in any second whatsoever i was i was accused of being spoiled and lying about it because like right away i'm like oh it's graha and everyone's like how does he know yeah like, but you second guess that <laughs> we started playing right when they made crystal tower required and it was like oh. a patch note. And I remember being like, why did they make this required? What a weird story to make required. And then oh. we get to the beginning of Shadowbringers and I'm like, oh, it's a cat dude. Okay, that makes sense. I the said it was Graha reasons. straight away, uh, but I didn't play it that way. I did Crystal Tower during Realm Reborn. And I went, oh, it's probably the guy. And then because it kept teasing it for so long, I went on massive journeys mentally as to who it mm. might be. Especially because I still thought we were time traveling. So I was like, it might be Louis <laughs> What if it's young Louis Soir or something like that? Is because uh, we travel back in time, it's like pre calamity or something. Uh, yeah, it turned out to be Graha, and I was like, yeah, that makes total sense. You know, those theories may have been like incredibly wrong, but based on where you were starting, which was with time travel, that's that makes a lot of sense, right? So yeah, I got I got all suspicious and twisted in my mind. Uh, and the Crystal Tower was a long time ago for me. It's hilarious because it there was time travel, <laughs> it's just not in the way you thought of it. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Typical of most FF games. Suddenly time travel. But Chad Another also thing. plays its games, you know, like the death yeah. of Gosetsu. They're all like, oh, I cried so hard at this part. Oh, this was the worst. I can't believe they did it. So by the time they brought out those same quotes for Ratika Greatwood and Yashitoa, we're like, come, come on, everybody. Really? Come. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, I didn't no. buy into Gosetsu either, which I think adds to going back to the other question about streaming it is you can at least i can and i think most viewers can tell 100 percent when you know something's happening uh like if you suddenly start getting really nervous coming to the end of uh, to the point in heaven's world where horshavon dies like oh i hope everybody comes out you can tell people are like you clearly know what's going on here and you've been pre-warned mm. uh of, of, it, there's there's you can you could just see it very blatantly as they're trying to set up a clip they're trying to set up a moment, but it's not genuine. And if uh, the best way of being able to tell is when something dramatic does happen, but you don't care that much about that character, or you don't believe them, <laughs> that you just go, ah, shut up. Like, <laughs> which is how I felt about Gosetsu. I was like, they're not killing Gosetsu here. Like, there's no way. We uh, had like a full 10, 15 minute, like just bullshit session between Kyle and me right before um, Ardbert. Well, uh, not Arbert, but uh, Frick. Who was possessing Arbert? Oh, Elidibus. Elidibus. Right before Elidibus, Arbert shows up for the first time. Uh, Kyle and I had like a good 10 to 15 minute. Just we were just having a conversation with each other. And Chad was burning the house down <laughs> because we didn't know it was literally we were one click away from that moment. No, and, well, the worst one was the uh, Alphano walks into the Crystarium lobby and goes, ah, everything seems to be great. Where? Emmett shows up and introduce oh, himself. Oh, that's right. I'm and I pause there. I'm like, I'm how y'all doing? Oh, let's get a drink. This is great. Al Alphino saying everything's going to be great. This is fine. Let's all hang out that's for a right. little bit. That's right. I'm getting them confused. It wasn't the it wasn't the Elidibus moment. It was the Emmett moment. Because they both happened yeah. in the same location, which is yeah. the, the, <clears throat> the courtyard of these. But that's the genuineness of it. Yeah. Right? That's exactly why people are reaching out to me saying, stop. Yeah. <laughs> Just let you know you should yeah. stop. Yeah. Uh, whereas if I'd known, I'd planned the, the day around it or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then a couple of people were a little rude. So then we stalled a little bit further. On. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what happens. That's I never happens. went as far as doing that. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> I only ever stalled because I'm genuinely interested in something else for the moment. It's just a sec. The story's <laughs> waiting for me. It's been here for years. It's not going anywhere. We're going to get there. Don't worry. Yes, gonna we are going to get there. It's totally promise. fine. I promise. Um, yeah. Uh, we got a question from Pothy, who said, having broadened your horizons beyond World of Warcraft, experiencing MMOs like 14 and Guild Wars 2, uh, PoE, and coming back to WoW, where do you see you dipping your toes next? And what would you recommend uh, the Grinding Gear community, uh, us to try? Oh, for you? Uh, well, I'm not and sure your gaming background. Um, I think one of the... Go on. Yeah, World of Warcraft, for the most part, both of us. I mean, it's how we started. It's how we can continued talking to each other past college was wow and then we started doing starcraft together and then we went into heroes together and now we're here have you tried poe no I only mean, wants to get that, overwhelmed i mean i did that blind and it's one of the most rewarding journeys i ever went on like it's hmm. it's an amazing experience to put aside the elitism that comes with that game um because it is extraordinarily deep but you 
Similar to MMOs, and you guys will probably understand this, is like nearly all the main content is designed to be beaten by anyone. And you then make a choice uh, uh, to push beyond that to the next big thing, right? So it, Mythic Raiding, for example, like most people playing kind of whatever they want could do Heroic. You can even pug that content. If you want to go to Mythic, yeah, you're going to have to start investing more time into it. Similar with FF14 and Savage. That's where you make that choice to go across. PoE is similar. It just doesn't present like that way at first, but it is still similar. Like I, I did it full blind and beat the top tier maps. I didn't go to the Ubers and things like that, which is where you then invest into like getting a real build, something that's been tested and seasoned and people have adapted onto and modified and specific gear sets and things. Uh, that's the next stage. But you, that journey that you go on for the first time and messing around with what is possible in that game is oh so fun because it's an infinite well of things to mess around with and have fun with if you're not looking to like try hard it uh if you're looking to just experience the game for the first time and uh enjoy that journey and be okay with failure which so many gamers aren't which is really sad uh be, it's fine to mess up and have to respect or to make the wrong choice nothing happens you're fine the sun will come up tomorrow it's all good uh, so like if you're okay with that and have fun with each other like oh my god why did i because i definitely specced into things that just ruined my character on occasion i was like oh my god and then i go out <laughs> and test it and like and go back and like change it back and that's really fun or you delete technically uh especially because it's such a loot driven game i definitely deleted things which were massive upgrades not that i knew it uh but people were face palming so hard at some of the things i did because you just wouldn't do that if you were a seasoned player um but that was the point i went to enjoy it for the first time because you can only really do that once so poe is definitely something i'd recommend um Sorry, on top Ryan. of that it's oh you're a duo which i assume you've done all the main duo stuff a way out and etc cetera, etc cetera. no not uh, really because this is all kind of new for us oh yeah yeah we, we oh, wow. podcasted before that but about like single games that we play sometimes play together starcraft was oh. kind of hard to play together unless we were trying to get pissed off at each other yeah um, a way out and it takes two i mean it takes two is my game of the year last year okay maybe 21 uh but that is a pure co-op experience it's not hard but it's hilarious like as a <laughs> duo uh duo content creation team it's hard to miss with that uh the, i think the only downside of that from a streaming perspective is nearly everybody has played it but I don't actually think in that game it would matter because it's more about the journey. It's not really about the ending. Uh, so those co-op games would be very, very fun. Other than that, there are some really great, great things that I think two content creators can make together, including old games like SimCity, where you can actually actively, toxically attack each other by doing nasty things like, you know, blow pollution over the other person's city to ruin their hopes and dreams <laughs> of utopia. Especially if you get the community involved uh, to mess around and stuff like that. Um, my personal little successes recently of things that I didn't expect my audience to like, and actually they really jumped on, were Satisfactory and uh, Planet Crafter. Building games, and sub, uh, Subnautica especially. Um, because one, everybody gets to comment on the design of what you're building, and they're watching you do it, and they're just like, what, are, yeah. what is this nightmare-fueled oh, wow. yeah. thing that you're constructing? Uh, and then when you're like, inevitably you're going to go, it's fine, I'm going to fix it. And then you set about it, like just seeing the audience react, like, oh my God, it's the worst thing. And then they also know things about the game that you don't know that's going to go wrong inevitably because they'll see you do something incorrectly. And they know that that's going to lead to something in about 20 seconds, which is going to be a big problem. And they just go. And then it inevitably falls apart and collapses. Yeah, so they just lean in. Yeah, yeah. Also, you could. Um, I mean, it depends on time zones, but what we've been doing recently and we're setting up in the background is some more overlapping streamer stuff. But for you to, um, that's what I would recommend for you guys, for sure, is to try those things out with your audience, certainly in a co-op experience. But um, I, I think that's good stuff. If you're looking specifically for MMOs, a little awkward. After you get past like the big two, there are weaknesses that become more and more apparent. Um, and interest you're going to a niche or niche audience at that point mm -hmm. uh so you do have to bear that in mind as um mmos require a huge time investment and if you're going to explore it properly the people who love it want to see you do it all and even though you might be having a good time ultimately world of warcraft and final fantasy 14 are kind of the, the big mega two with a big audience and you're, you're constantly shaving away at the potential audience for other games uh yeah. so 
Yeah, that's that's not a road I would super recommend unless you have a goal like I did with Project MMO. Like, what is our goal? What is our purpose? If it's just to play the game, eh, past the Final Fantasy XIV, you're probably not going to garner much interest, I wouldn't have thought. And then you Makes mentioned sense. a new one coming out that you're kind of curious about, Blue Protocol? Uh, there is like four coming out, uh, four or five coming out. Uh, we've got some MMO lights that's coming out. I'm getting to game tests tomorrow, which is Wayfinder. Um, I'm going to do some playtesting on that. Uh, Blue Protocol. I'm, I'm well, excited for Paleo. I'm not, <laughs> after I just played it. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, no. Yeah, I oh, know no. it's in testing right now. I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> yeah, we have Paleo. Um, it's not for me, that's all, and that's fine. It's a, a Stardew Valley super cozy game. Uh, I'm not a fan of it because I need a bit of action, I need a bit of rough, I need a bit of edge. Uh, but uh, my team, uh, certainly uh, one member of our team, is playing the hell out of it, as are certain other people. They love it. They absolutely adore it. Um, their monetization model looks, is a bit scuff at the moment as well. They've been caught doing some iffy things that they're trying to correct. Mm. Um, so keeping my eye on that. Um, Blue Protocol is the anime MMO, uh, which has been made by a full-on anima anime studio and a uh, very popular Korean band. But the gameplay is really tight. So Amazon invited me to play that in London uh, a couple of months back because uh, they're westernizing the game. It's already out in Japan and Korea. But the westernization version, they want to make sure is right. And me oh, being a non <laughs> yeah. fantasy starring it a little bit like as a non anime fan, I was kind of the perfect person to come and check. Like one, we know you will not like the anime. That's a good thing. What's the gameplay like? <laughs> like, is okay, it, is I saw it... screenshots of this forever ago and forgot about it. I really like how it looks, um, even though I'm not the type of person that's like, I like anime, but I'm not sold on a game because it has an anime art style. Yeah, same. Uh, so I was down there to test that i uh, got a few hours with it and got to speak to the franchise director of it and have an interview with him who's the former game director of guild wars 2 uh, which works out really well okay um yeah so we did that that looks really good we've already got ashes of creation uh i'm, I'm super hyped for the dune mmo it's gonna suck i know it but i'm, I'm super hyped for but it but hopefully I'm in the dune good way boy. like the arc kind of messy uh... It's going to be terrible. I know it. I know it. <laughs> no. I'm not saying it because of the studio or anything, but because yeah. I, I don't want it to, it will. Yeah. I know it. That's fair. But I'm still going to play it. As an Aliens fan, I've, every video game, I'm always like, I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know I mean, For the longest time, that was me and Star Wars, and then they finally started making some good Star Wars games. I actually want to go play Galaxies. Uh, so oh, I mentioned cool. it on stream and the people who run the private server contacted us because they were in the stream and they were like, please let us know when you're coming because you kill the server. Like if we... Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, I they're, can like, imagine. they're like, they're like we, we want you to come and play for sure, but please give us heads up of when you're coming. And I'm that like, I don't know when that is, but I do want to try out Galaxies because I ignored it. Uh, my brother was playing at the time and I was playing an MMO called Neocron. Um... And I didn't like Star Wars, like we mentioned earlier. I'm not a Star Wars fan, so I wasn't interested. Uh, but the stories I've heard, I wish I was a part of it and a content creator when Galaxies was at its peak. And then they did the, I can't remember what the name of the expansion was, that completely rewrote the whole game and everybody left immediately. Like they killed their own game uh, of whatever that expansion was. Uh, so <laughs> I, I kind of want to go back and see what it was all about because I didn't experience it um, when it, my brother and my nephew did. Uh, so I just want to try it out, but again, it's a big commitment. It was it was a special game, but yeah, it was a, a product of its time in many regards too. There yeah. was no game from my childhood I wanted to play more, but it was again, it was I don't even think I had a credit card when that mm -hmm. game came out. Like I don't think I had a bank account yet. So have you tried uh, WoW Ascension? Out of interest. What one? World of Warcraft Ascension. It's a, it is a private server thing, so you can't stream it, unfortunately. But it's um, oh no, I haven't. Yeah, it's a server that's put roguelite element, elements into, into World of Warcraft and oh, made new classes that. like Chronomancers and things like that. They've modified all the spells, apparently plays super, super well. They um, big, big recommendations coming in about it. I haven't tried it myself, but all these options are out there, but I can't stream it because Blizzard doesn't seem to like you streaming. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, how, how strange. Out. How strange. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they get a little mad about it, unfortunately. What's your yeah? Yeah, I mean, along those lines, let's just start talking about your favorite Final Fantasy fourteen add-ons. Um, you know, perfect, uh, perfect. I only rec uh, <laughs> what you can see it actually. <laughs> <laughs> you can, I, I have here. it installed IRL for the oh, audio-only yeah. listeners. Preach has chat a chat bubble drawn on his microphone. 
I did. I lose my mind every time they do a live letter and it gets to like the miscellaneous changes at the end where they are introducing add-on functionality into the base game so you don't need an add-on. And he still... In fact, for FanFest, I was kind of thinking of cosplaying as a chat bubble, like a big, <laughs> giant chat bubble like outfit and just walking around FanFest as a chat bubble to I, I, yeah. see if I could talk to Yoshi P. <laughs> I, I could I could see my follow up question going long. Are, are you good on time? <laughs> hey, yeah, gonna, I've got nowhere to be. I was going to clarify. So, you're, are you going to FanFest Europe? Yes, uh, that's why we didn't go to the Las Vegas one. It overlaps with okay. Alcon. Uh, and, also, I hate Las Vegas. It's a death trap. <laughs> I've uh, never been before, and I agree with that. I did not. I yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> on the last or on the first episode of the podcast, I think when we got back, people were like, "What do you think of Vegas?" And I said, "I'm the type of person that always finds something to love anywhere I go." That didn't happen really. No, I liked when we left Las Vegas and went on a road trip with my wife and kids, but then we had to come back. Uh, I was also there at the same time of year. That heat is just ludicrous. Yeah, it's, it's, the it's not fun. It's the hottest I've ever been. It's the hottest temperature I've ever experienced. And I live in Florida, so yeah, yeah it's it was, disgusting. It was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah. Uh, I like seeing my friends, and the con was so. This is because you started playing after Shadowbringers came out as well. Yes, I believe so. So this will be your first fan fest, yeah. Yep, I ignored everything and live letters and stuff until I uh, was up to date. Uh, so yes, my first fan fest. I'm learning so much about it. I like that they break the, break the trailer up into segments and then muffle the audio and change things. So it gets that speculation going in the hide, hide a sword clearly, obviously hide a sword. Alpha no in a boat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so like, yeah, I like that. Um, I'm enjoying it, but I'm also glad I didn't go to the first one. Not to crap on North America because like. You get the weakest version of the stuff. We do. We do. Fair. Which for us was perfect because we were not current. Yeah. <laughs> so True. Yeah, that's true, I suppose. Like, we had, we had a couple people get really, most people were like well-meaning concerned for us going. We had a couple people who took it way too far. Um, but yeah, In a way, though, because they want you to have the experience they had, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always look exactly. at it that way. They're not being malicious. It's just that you, they think you're really spoiling one of their best times of their lives. Like, not from, like, your experience is the best time, but a best time they had, you're not going to, maybe not going to have now. Yeah. And they feel, yeah. they, they want to protect you from that. There's and a to, good intention behind it. To Square Enix's team, uh, his credit, uh, and the folks running FanFest credit, there was an Endwalker recap panel, and they did a spoiler warning before they started it. <laughs> <laughs> they know. Yeah. They're not yep. stupid. They know. But you yep. just so if you go watch our video, you can watch us sprinting out of the con floor. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you just said you went to, immediately. to like a exile con. So you, you've been to single game cons before then. So that won't be a new experience. No, because that's uh, what really impressed us was because we BlizzCon was our con up until this point. And mm -hmm. that was uh, the same for me. FanFest is it, it was it was wild uh, knowing everyone's there for one game and one game only. And oh, I it, see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. it made it uh, really cohesive because you could go. I only caught like the very tail end of the um, of the cosplay panel, but it led into the beginning of the piano performance. And so it literally went from people memeing in giant grapes cosplay to the classiest musical performance I've ever personally witnessed. Yeah. And I'm like, this would never work at like BlizzCon because you got too many disparate people interested in too many different things. But here you can go from the ha 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 scrapes to, all right, let's bring out the jazz gowns and have a, a beautiful piano performance. And yeah. it just works seamlessly. Oh, I'm looking forward to it because uh, I think the FanFest in London, I'm surprised how small it is. Because I was basing everything off BlizzCon. Um, is the one we, in London smaller? Uh, the one in London is 4,000 people. That's it? Uh, Whoa. That's yeah, it. That is yeah, small. it's Holy it's, crap. It's tiny. It's absolutely tiny. And I, was I was shocked. We were all gonna, we've were we organized uh, like a party because we expected everybody in our community, essentially, who could go to get a ticket uh, like they would for BlizzCon, right? Um, and then it came out that they sold out in like two seconds. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, I was lucky enough to win one. I didn't get like one from Squeenix. They, I won on the lottery. Um, and then all our like uh, our community was like, oh, we we didn't get tickets. Like, they just went. We didn't get one. We didn't get one. We didn't get one. And I was like, oh crap, because we'd planned a whole thing uh, to have have in London because we were going to be down there, and nobody got any tickets, and it was a real bummer. And 
thankfully with the re revamps they did it again they like recycled it as more people did get tickets so we're having like a hundred person private party uh in london but we were expecting to do something really big and fun for everybody uh, i don't know why they do it so small but because the arena they're doing it in i've been to for a few events and it's it holds like 10 or twelve thousand people uh but they're just booking one room for it that's it i i have a feeling um they're gonna learn some lessons for the for the next one um like they didn't seem prepared for the turnout or the people or everyone to want to do everything because like they only had like one play pit for for the the trial that you could play mm -hmm. and and it was the line was nightmarish <laughs> like and i'm and i'm like listen everything about this i like more than blizzcon but y'all need to learn how to do game stations better because yeah like you've got uh, i think vegas was 14 or fifteen thousand people and there's only one thing you can actually go play everyone's gonna want to go do that so it that, might that be was... because of the surge of popularity uh because they haven't had one since covid and the downfall of shadowlands and the surge over to 14 they might have underestimated just how popular certainly in the west I, it had become i absolutely think that's what what it's a perfect storm mm -hmm. right like it's post covid yeah. and post the uh, explosion in popularity of the game but yeah, yeah. overall <laughs> um we had a really good time and we had a lot we had a lot of folks show up to our meetup that just they just came out for the meetup because they couldn't yeah. get a ticket to fan fest so you might you might experience some of that too well we have yeah like um uh, there are a lot of people come into look because we're having the party the day before the event uh so i think maybe we were, we're actually overbooked now which is always the way it goes <laughs> it's like it was originally it was like 40 people now it's a lot more um but it there, a lot of people are coming who don't have fan fest tickets because they're also quite expensive they were like blizzcon expensive um oh, not anymore blizzcon is more expensive now so uh it's actually a bargain to go to fan fest by comparison <laughs> Oh, good. Uh, Blizzcon tickets so, are yeah. over three hundred dollars US now, I believe. For a short notice one as well, because they only announced yeah. it this year for this yeah. year. Yeah. Um. So it's gonna be interesting. I'm still excited for it though. Like, uh, I like seeing the WoW announcement and just generally getting to see everybody. It's gonna be good. But Fan Fest, I'm hype as hell for. Yeah. If if I go, it'll be last minute. And I'll probably just go to party at the Hilton. I don't think I'll. I mean, what else are you going to do at BlizzCon? You're not going to go inside. Go <laughs> <laughs> like, for real. I have a buddy who's now on the Hearthstone team, and I'm so proud of him, and I want to go and party with him and say hi. And um, all I know, a lot of our, my friends are going to be there, but I don't know. That's don't the only reason I go. go. Like, I love the announcements and stuff. And yeah, if we do an interview and stuff, that's awesome. But I'm not queuing up to play, like, World of Warcraft. Yeah, yeah. even though the, no. the BlizzCon queues aren't, aren't that bad. They go pretty quick, but... I've never been in one. <laughs> See, uh, I mean, the last like five BlizzCons, I had a media pass, but the first few I went to, no one gave a crap. <laughs> yeah, I'm not being smug about it. It's just that we do have like the alphas and stuff at home, generally speaking. So, like, and we are fortunate in that regard. Is like, I'm not going to play it here. I can yeah. queue up. I'd rather meet people and just say hi to as many people as humanly possible. That's, that's yeah. why I'm there. Yeah, which works yeah, exactly. out super well. Well, rad. Well, uh, thanks for coming on. Like, mm. We really this appreciate your time today. Yeah, thanks for this hanging a, with us. It was a good time talking with you. Kyle, I hope you enjoyed, as you called it, two Lokis warring. It was glorious. It was beautiful. It was, good time. it was absolutely beautiful. There've been, there's been some comments in our Discord I caught people being like, oh, I'm excited for, for Mike and Garrett to to go at it because they're apparently... They, they, oh, I, I wasn't as, I wasn't as in the know <laughs> about your takes, but people were like, Mike and Garrett had a pretty similar onboarding experience. I wonder how they'll, how they'll mm. get on, so okay i hope it lived up to everyone's expectations uh, <laughs> and seriously shout out to like our community because that's that's how this happened y'all y'all were like oh you recommended you should come on and and here we are doing a podcast yeah, no, together, same so. thing they uh, they came over and said oh let's do this uh and i was like thank god like because we were talking before the show it's like the good podcasts just aren't happening at the moment uh so to have one as good as yours is great Thank God, because we haven't had one for ages. Because uh, none of us want to run a podcast. Like, uh, uh, we all want to talk about games. Actually, none of us want to run a podcast under any circumstances. So we're all just like waiting for somebody else to do it. Like, who'll do it? Uh, like, we all just wait and wait silently for something to happen. Oh, that's that's hilarious. Thank you for the compliment. It's hilarious because compared to making a YouTube video, this is like the easy thing. It's like you just record and post it. Hell yeah, let's go. It's organizing the guests. It's mm, getting yeah. it all timed up right. They're yeah, that's why we don't world. have a guest every week. That's why we don't yeah, have a it's a pain in the backside uh, if you yeah. do it that way. 
I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not doing it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, thank you. And, and shout out to your community manager. Uh, it was super, super helpful. Yeah. Um, Lady Bex. Yeah. Bex rules. So, um, Kyle, did you, you have outro music queued up for us? Oh, uh, what, what, what is it on this button? Oh, well, we're going to find out. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mystery. It's an older one. Week. It's an older yeah. one. Well, uh, thanks again. We want to give a shout out to uh, everyone supporting us on our Patreon. Uh, we've got a simpler link you can use to get there. Just go to supportourbromance.com. If you want to go to our Patreon, that's where you can find it. Um, and a uh, huge thanks to our recent patrons, Epi, RK, Ansgar, David S., and Arado. Thank you for signing up. We really appreciate you for clicking that button. And a huge thanks to our legendary level backers, Sean B., Mike R., Stephen J., Doss, Sean with an EAB, and Cheesy Pop. We really appreciate your support, everybody. Uh, Mike, preach. You're our guest today. If folks aren't already finding you, which I would be surprised by how many folks in our Discord were excited you were coming. But if they're unaware where to find you, where can folks find you? Uh, Twitch, YouTube, primarily. You can just type Preach Gaming and you'll find us pretty pretty easily. Uh, we'll be around somewhere, but we do stream Europe time. So, sorry, America. We, we tend to <laughs> dip on the US. We're very good for Australia and New Zealand, though. Like, very, very good for those. Uh, is you'll find us around there. That's all of our, uh, our our European viewers who don't like when we stream on Thursday evenings. Here you go. Check out Breach. Uh, other than that, that, everything we do can be found on the Grinding Gear channel on YouTube. It's where we stream. It's where we post our videos. Just subscribe to the Grinding Gear YouTube channel. And uh, hope everybody who's over here is seeing us for the first time because you like what Preach does. Hope you enjoyed it. See you all very soon. Until next week. GG. Take care. Bye, everybody. All right. That's the end of the official recording stream is still live. Yep. Uh, oh, no. That was awesome. God, I hate you guys. Like, oh. never invite me on. That was rough. Okay, cool. That was a <laughs> disagreeable Worst stream. podcast I've ever been on. <laughs> These pieces of shit like least Well, at least one of us does. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely outrageous. I had to hold my tongue through the whole thing. Yep. Just the worst takes I've ever heard. <laughs> Not even hot, just cold. Ice cold takes. <laughs> <laughs> frozen, frozen takes. <laughs> oh, again, uh, again, thank you, man. This was uh, this was a good time. It was a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, no problem. Really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Um, it's been a while since we've been able to kick back and relax and talk about that stuff. Oh, it's been, yeah, it's been super, yeah. super fun. Uh, well, uh, and uh, get Jesse on so we can have a, a, a round, a roundabout fight. Yeah, we have we have an extra hole here, right here where the where the sign is. Well, hey, I'm always looking for an extra hole, and yeah. you've got one available. So Perfect. we'll make dreams come true. Perfect. <laughs> All right. I love you. Leave you guys. Have a good afternoon. Have morning. a good one. Thank you. Bye. I'm going to post a link. If y'all, oh, well, it, it's probably all going to break horribly, too. Yeah. It's going to explode. Just just, just do two me's or Garrett's in pieces whatever. in yeah. shambles. I'll get it's you the, fixed up the, here. We've got the Garrett forehead, and we've got the Garrett mouth. Uh, just posting the link. On today's podcast. To the Twitch. To the Twitch. And then let's get the uh Oh wait, no, that's that's not right at all. That's that's not that's not right at all. That's something else. No, I did what it did all wrong. Do? I did all I did what the did... preach gaming. I did the preach gaming.com. No, that is not one. his that no, is not his no, Twitch. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. That is not his Twitch. But I'm he's got the that. same thing as me, uh, or us, I should say. He's got the um the old show that became his clips channel. So that one's a little that one's good too. Yeah, no, no, we, we got go. preach we go. LFW. And I'm go. getting a link. Or did you already do? Yep, I, I got did it all fixed up. I got it fixed okay. up. Okay. All right, we're good. We're good. Hell yeah. We yeah. Can move the past on YouTube. We can move the past. We can do it. I love when someone finds us new and they somehow find our old videos, even though they're unlisted. Because every once in a while, like a couple times a year, we'll get a comment on an old video that says, "What the hell was this channel before?" Oh, yes, it was. Uh, <laughs> it was many things. It was uh, so many things. It was podcast land, where you know, it, it was storage. Really, at the end of the day, it was storage. Is what yeah. it came down to. It was a lot. It was a lot. Superb pin, pin message. What's the pin message? Did we pin a wrong message? Oh, we pinned to Leggy out of Leggy. Yeah. Nailed what? it, Kyle. What? Nailed it. The pinned message is is Dew Keeper just writing to Leggy and at a Leggy. We, uh, on the, YouTube? On our chat right now, up at the top. Look at the top of the chat. What? The message you pinned. I didn't pin that. Oh, then maybe I pinned it. Oh, I, I probably went to remove something and accidentally pinned. 
Yeah, here we go. We're going to uh, pin this here. Thank you, Das. There we Thank go. You. There we go. All right, Garrett, you're all fixed up. Oh, wonderful. There we go. Wonderful. How are we all feeling after that? That was a good time. That was, that was, that was chill, an excellent man. That time. Was, that was a good time. I, I want... love talking to other content creators. I, it's, you know, it's, it's always a delight to, to peek behind the, the curtain a bit and get to see where everyone's head is. I think it's awesome that he gets to do so much variety streaming too. Like, and I hope, I hope people are recommending him Factorio if he's going on a satisfactory journey. I hope, I hope he gets into mm. some Factorio. I love that one so much. It's a good game. But we are going to take a moment here to thank everybody who became a member during that stream, as well as some super chats we got here. So hold tight. Yeah, we'll thank you. you. We had so many gifted memberships during this. Uh, we really appreciate it. I am uh, backing up the audio recording. At Good the moment, idea. Just Good idea sure. to save that stuff. You know, just to make sure nothing yeah. bad happens. Hit the backups. See, this is the podcast producing part Preach didn't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, it, it, it happens. Yeah, man. It happens. I totally get, yeah. Didn't really think about it, but, uh, you know, he, he meant, y'all heard it. Y'all heard it. Uh, we're going to have to do a four, a, a, a four headed freaking round table. I, I, really I love that to idea. Say four way. Yeah. I love that idea. That'd yeah. be a blast. Yeah. After after uh, uh, Jesse's uh, uh, GIF reply on Twitter, you know, I think. Oh yeah, he he wanted it. He wanted it. Uh, it's more like when would we do it? End of Endwalker or would we do it? Current patches. I think End of Endwalker would feel good since I've heard patches are all kind of their own thing. Yeah, patches are kind of yeah yeah that'd be good. And then uh, you know they'll know what's in the patch content and they can grill us about wrong theories. Oh that's about right yeah yeah we can do a little content. theory time. Theory time with Jesse's always little. a good time. Little theory time, yeah. Yeah, it'll be good. Let's see. Uh, what well, are you working on? I'm, I have backed up my versions. I have saved those things. So I'm going to get going on the thank you to members too. And I'm without my reading eye, Garrett, here. So please excuse me. No Vitlari. Thank you for becoming a member. Generic nerd, time chaser, Bloodsy Von Snugglegore for gifting 10 memberships during the stream today. Earth Rester, D. Jorillo, uh, also gifted five memberships as well. Metallic, given to Alu Gamers, which we now know the. We, we had that explained. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, some bean, uh, reminding folks to like the stream. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks for your 14 months, Duncan. Uh, we, we read Chris's. Thanks again for that super chat, Chris. Uh, I am a, I am a dark room, Kyle. Oh yes. Room. That's cause I put up the music cause I was, you know, putting on some background music for us. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. vernacular ham put on 10 memberships for us. So thank nice. you for that, ham. Nice. What next Much one appreciated. Uh, Pocky, thanks for the super chat. Welcoming preach and his quay. <laughs> Daycoth is with a super sticker during all of this. Arwojo uh, was so excited, they decided to throw money in our face. Excellent. So thank you, Arwojo. Thank you for that. Uh, fi uh, Suna hitting 15 months during the preach stream. Oh my goodness, 15 months. <laughs> Can we get an F in chat for those that miss HOTS? <laughs> uh, F in chat if you miss Heroes of the Storm. Yeah, if, if you play and maybe still play Heroes of the Storm, a quick poll. Actually, I could do a poll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can we? Let's, let's do a, let's see if how sad this poll is. Uh, Off air before we went live, um, I mentioned that we did Heroes stuff and uh, and Mike was like, oh, oh, cool. What a, what a time and place. And I was like, yeah, we just played a game yesterday. And he legitimately was like, I didn't think it was still up. Yeah. <laughs> As most people post, what was that? 2018, I believe so. Yep. Yep. Uh, Chris Chin hit us with a generous super saying, my current three fourteen content creators in one place. Good day indeed. Oh, you. Nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I Apparently this happened because someone clipped from our Q&A uh, when someone asked if you could have anyone on the show, who would it be? And I said, well, besides any one from the 14 team, because they're impossible to get a hold of. Sure. Uh, I think I'd like to talk to Preach. Someone clipped that, sent it, <laughs> sent it over Preach's way. I guess we were also getting some chatter in his chat, and uh, that's how this happens. So yeah. thanks, everybody. Y'all yeah. made this happen. I was sent many it's... a screenshot of, wait, wait, who's Kyle? Because you're, you're from the instance, so the po the podcast MMO comparison was being made. 
But uh, as oh, we are at, now at 59% no, uh, I'm going to say that most people probably didn't get the Kyle connection in the room. <laughs> Maybe not. Although, you know, Instance listeners also listen to There Will Be Dungeons, which you were a fixture That's of, fair. So. That's, and I did come on an episode of The Instance to sell you and Scott on Final Fantasy XIV at one point. Yes. Like, Unsuccessfully at the time. Yes. Unsuccessfully at the time. After that, Scott did pitch to me. He's like, what if we just made The Instance of Final Fantasy XIV podcast? And I'm like, I'll never play that game, Scott. Nope. That was my response. Another to him. And time now I feel line. like an asshole because I I wonder sometimes. I've asked Scott this and he's told me he, he does not think this, but I feel like I'm, he may at some point have thought I was dodging him, and I wasn't. I just truly just didn't think I was going to play this game. It was just natural. Truly didn't think I was going to play this game. Uh, Leonis with a super praise the trolley in qua here. Uh, Wallfair super chatted uh, and was awaiting the happy turtle. Uh, think of all the fun you'll have at the happy turtle i don't uh we sh- should have probably read this before mike left yeah we should have means. gotten a clarification on what the happy t- we got yeah. rats and what happy, is, turtles? What's the happy turtle we were told to ignore the rats so maybe we ignore, yeah, the, ignore the turtle the too i'm not sure of the rules no rats and definitely don't put a rat in stream right now you no. shouldn't do that no that's a... you shouldn't do that uh chris with another super chat saying so much has changed during my f- uh five-year coma but at least i can remain secure in the knowledge that garrett will never play some dumb weed <laughs> game <laughs> i mean yeah, if you it woke up. Happened. Yeah. If you woke up, you could it's, believe this it's was still the true. Instance. I haven't played a dumb weep game. Never I've, once. I'm currently playing a great weep game. No, no, but I mean you've never like checked out like a shonen jump crossover thing and been like, well, this is kind of not great. Um You never once like fired up a one piece of Sword Art Online game and I just I don't been... like one piece. I know, but just so like I out of never curiosity. Give it the time of day. Like, uh, no, no. I played oh. Dragon Ball Z games and I always liked them because a lot of Dragon Ball Z games are pretty good. Hmm. Yeah. Played a bunch of Gundam games. They were good. Yeah, no. I can't think of an American studio making an anime ass game, Oni. I enjoyed Oni when that was a okay. new game. Okay. So, yeah. lucky you. Yeah, no. I, I, like, I like the anime games I chose to play. Because, as you know, Kyle, I have great taste. Yes, of course, of course. According and I, to me, I have great taste. And I have a horrible wound that Sword Art Online left in my heart, so I continue to try to fill it with more Sword Art Online. I'm always disappointed, but I continue to try. <laughs> Even the video games, I continue Kyle's to try. Kyle's Isekai obsession is truly just his trauma perseverance. It's just, I, I made a, it's my Project MMO, Project Isekai. I'll watch every single one, at least the first episode. I'll try every single Isekai. Yeah. Okay, okay. Eggs, thanks for the three months. We appreciate it. Uh, Rotolia with uh, 10 gifted memberships during this. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Bahamut said, seems Preach just hit Sylphs by the end of session five. Oh, I see. And he, and he was into it. I, re- I remember getting to the Sylphs and being like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I mean, what are it, these plant people? It, it, I did like the one with the mask, though. I did become really endeared to the mask Sylph that ends up getting not kicked. making it. Yeah. They die and it bummed me out. Uh, bum me out. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Preach is obviously a great storyteller uh, with drama time and all of that and a great orator reader. So I can see him having a good time with it. But for me, like I famously, you know, told the story of I fell asleep in Sestasha, ended up with four accommodations. <laughs> 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 but it was great because I was playing it as a new dad. I was tired. I wanted something like a book to read at night. And it was very, very relaxing. And being an isekai enjoyer, I loved everything to do with the side party going on the early bits uh, before that got horribly haunted. Yeah, I ended up sticking with it because y- y- we were like, all right, let's make some videos and and see. So I was I was sticking with it for the sake of of making some videos because we wanted it seemed like a good thing to cut our teeth on for YouTube. And I because I played it off stream, I ended up similarly i'm not a dad but i it was like a book it was like relaxing with a book i would play it right before i went to bed which i never do with video games because they'll they'll keep me up but oh, realm reborn is uh for for all of the all of the i think fairly justified warnings that realm reborn is is slow and at times boring it's very relaxing it's very very relaxing to just read through realm reborn at your own pace um so yeah i ended up it, it felt very much like a book it kind of that's why i haven't read the latest installment in the Gideon series because it's like Final Fantasy kind of took the place of a book in took my all your read right energy now. I get that yeah, yeah totally get that yeah and now I'm just tired about the end because I'm doing too many dumb voices so <laughs> yeah yeah 
Uh, yeah, uh, Suna with the the, uh, the the best super chat here said, yeah, unfortunate they didn't remake Warcraft 3. They just shut, de- shut it down on Bnet for some reason. Oh my yeah. god. Weird that. I launched Weird. a podcast and everything. I was ready to do Warcraft 3 content. I was going to follow the esports. I was ready for the the revitalization and uh, I stopped uh, launching games with launching games after that. Oh, I guess I did Pokemon Unite, but still, my lesson was learned. That is a good launch. Yeah, but Pokemon Unite had a fine launch. That looked that looked promising. It, that, I'm honestly, I love doing that project, and I love who I was working with. I just had to put this energy over here for this project. But yeah, for like, I think we all in from 2017 kind of started to learn like maybe wait till the game's out before you start a podcast about it. Yeah, you do. And with our stream now, now we can do a launch day stream and see what it's like. Uh, and but there's I don't no one's getting on it. I there are some impatient people uh, in a nice way for for us getting back to 16 and us getting back to Baldur's Gate 3. But uh, no one's mad that we didn't do another Resident Evil 4 stream. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I know there's a few people that are like, oh, I wanted more of that. I'm like, uh, I appreciate it, but whew, didn't didn't cover the cost sometimes of the game. Work. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't work out. <laughs> like I lo- yeah yeah you know I had fun, but. You know, it's like uh, it's like I'm sure a, a band retires songs that people don't cheer for. You know, there's, there comes a point where you, you play it and you're like, oh, that one didn't hit. That one didn't hit. Yeah, maybe we don't we don't do that. You know, so it's it's like it's not that you're just chasing numbers. It's that oh. you also want the stream to be involved and having yeah. a good time. Yeah. You know, and you need to find that 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 Goldilocks zone. And we definitely found that with 14. And I think we I think we found out with Baldur's Gate 3. I'm really excited to play more Baldur's Gate yeah, 3. Yeah, me too. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll get back to 16. Don't worry, Fenrir. We'll get back to 16. It'll happen. It'll happen. We, we came back and it just felt like the most perfect co-op game ever made was just like delivered in our lap and, is what happened. And our ending was so perfect. Like our stop point for 16 was so perfect. Like I have to, I have to literally like re-jazz myself to get into it because... One of my favorite characters, you know? It felt like a season finale. Yeah, it really did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Snow Bites, uh, thank you for the five gifted memberships, as well as uh, Sean and Jen Amelia and Laura Collins, all heading us with five gifted memberships. Nice. Very kind. And then Kaoru, Super Chad, uh, said, then Preach came and played a stupid weeb game for anime fans. Yep. (laughs) That was the story. This joke gets made so much. I think you know some passerbyers are like, but "What? It, it must be a dumb weeb game." Maybe, Maybe someone not. out there it takes that seriously. You know that happens, right? I, like somebody. This is their first time tuning into a conversation on Final Fantasy XIV, and the per, the perseverance of this joke uh, uh, is is so frequent. You know, someone sees that for the first time and internalizes it as not a if joke. If you're absorbing a single quote from someone on the internet and then becoming mad, I think you're interneting wrong in 2023. <laughs> you got you got to find a couple extra bad tweets to go, oh my God, they're a horrible trash person. You know, you got you to gotta armor up a right, little bit yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. Don't make the decision yeah. off one interaction Just here. a little bit more. If you want to leave more. a comment based on the title of the video, that's fine because that's just fuel for the algorithm. You know, we prefer you watch the video, but if you yeah. just want to comment on the title, you know, that's okay too. Yeah. Yeah. Smile Rat, thanks for the two months. Vernacular Ham just shouted floor inspector with, with money attached to it. Nice. You know, just threw it. I imagine that it was as a brick, like with the with the it written on it. Mm-hmm. Like like in throne. Just like someone yelling floor inspector. Uh Kit, thanks for the super chat reminding folks that they can like streams on YouTube. Really appreciate that. It's a big help. Yeah, we're almost at a thousand likes. So if you haven't hit like already, I yeah. uh, would appreciate it. Thank yeah, we're at 982 right now. Yeah. Viden, thank you for your eight months and defending Moonbrita. Much appreciated. <laughs> Someone just unliked and liked again because I saw the likes go down. <laughs> 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 thank you for your service. Oh my god. Hey, we hit it. Thank you, stream. Thank you so much. Uh our uh our Adix and one of these things I'm gonna learn how to pronounce this. Thanks for the super set. Uh uh Stormblood 4.0 is the only place uh when I maintain the story needed to be part of the game. Wait, what? The oh the side story needed to be part of the game. Mm. That would be what, Omega? Well Omega yeah, well Omega yeah, yeah. Well Omega, yeah, yeah. 
It was so weird because I just thought it was around every corner. Like I figured every interaction, every new place we went, I'm like, okay, here comes Omega. Here comes Omega. If that's what they're talking about, there could be other aspects. No, because the black, the, the optional black rose quest is earlier, isn't that it? That is no, that that's in Stormblood. That's out. Wait, oh, that is Stormblood. Yeah. Yes, yes, because that's heading towards Shadowbringers. That that starts. Yeah. But yeah, Omega also. The shape Omega took was so unique that it makes sense it was standalone. But through Stormblood, I was constantly being like, this is Omega, right? We're doing Omega now, right? Oh, yeah, same. All of Stormblood. We were Chili like, when's Omega show up? Chili, it, Sorrow's being part of the MSQ. Yoshi P lied to his team and said that everything was MSQ in Shadowbringers. And <laughs> all of it is MSQ quality. Like, you'd have to do it all. Uh, even near is like of ridiculous quality and it's absolutely absurd yeah a lot uh, of effort yes. it's worth uh, yeah i think e eden and sorrows should be required because they wrap up major story points from Shadowbringers. like major major story points i should undo one more button i mean i can don't threaten me with a good time <laughs> there we go we're just gonna sit like that oh, for a little lovely. bit yeah we're gonna really show off that's as long as it gets. I don't manicure my chest okay. here. That's it. That's where it stops. Actually, that is, that is a little too much. That is well, a yeah, you feel just... wide there. Oh, I see what happened. Throw Another wide. one came undone. <laughs> ah, I see. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I'm a I'm a three button guy with mm -hmm. most button up shirts. Most button up shirts. Uh, uh, Kauru, thank you for the moon burrito. Brought the cocaine to the scions. Super chat. I'm so glad you spent money on that. Huh. I'm so glad. Uh, OnlyFans content, yeah, you know, it'll it'll be built like I need to do a few more push-ups before you can claim that. <laughs> that man, that man is setting unrealistic body expectations. I would really like to have a conversation about this. <laughs> Justin Tomer, thanks for signing up during this. Welcome to the Gearbox. We got some bonus videos for you that you just unlocked. Also, yeah, you can uh, get in our true. members only chat, which is where we pulled the questions from for today's podcast. That's true. Over on our Discord. Uh, Kaur just 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 showering us with uh, with supers today. Said manage or your garden and don't grow just tomatoes because a tomato blight will wipe out your whole crop. Is this about Palia? I uh, no, I assume this is about uh, content creation. Oh, I mean, yes. it could be about any farm game you've ever played on Earth. But yes, yes, oh, you should not. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Single investments and all that. Yeah. Also, back to back D, thank you for the 10 gifted memberships and the super that said, don't know if the guys mentioned it, but in big streams, the joke around here is that it's a Baja stream. It's a good way to manage hype, in my opinion. <laughs> that is yeah, true. I think we're pretty good about it. Yep. You know, if it's if it's a stream of many things, we're going to be exploratory. You know, if it's an extreme, it's going to be an extreme. We don't lie about those. No, no. But, um, you know, there's always the chance that it could just be Baja at the end of the day. Who knows? There is a chance. I really, chance. Like I really like Baja. Baja's fun. Baja's great. It's a good time. It's a good time. Our Wojo with a super chat thanking Mike. I feel like I need to ferret that money over to Mike. Mm, mm. That's what I feel like. It I was great to, to be joined by Mike. If you're thanking time. Mike. Yeah. Uh, Zamara, thank you for your six months. I'm glad you're stoked about Reaper later. I'm stoked for Reaper later. This is like the number one job I have been wanting to go get. Yeah. You've but like, Kyle and I promised we would do it together because we don't job together. And you also need a melee. So it's perfect for you. Like it's yes, just plugging I in do. the. I do need a melee. Brand Walker, yeah. Dude, I'm so stoked for Reaper. That's what we're doing tonight, 8 a.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, right here on our YouTube channel, live stream. See us uh, tantalize you for next week's Endwalker MSQ by unlocking Reaper for ourselves. Uh, Drusoni wants to know if you tried Aliens Fireteam Elite. I almost bought it, and then I got Tears of the Kingdom. So... <laughs> ah. I got distracted. I've heard it's actually good, though. On vacation, my brother was playing it the whole time, and it does look good. Yeah, like an actual ali good Aliens game. The one right before that, apparently, the Alien Queen wasn't actually a boss. It was a set piece that would, like, growl at you, and if you stood by it, it wouldn't move. You know, like it was a Disney ride animatron. It was horrible. Uh. Absolutely horrible, apparently. So mm. I've gotten excited about Aliens games in the past and, and then been hurt. Here's that, <laughs> here's that stream going live tonight, and I'll give you guys a link here to the MSQ stream next week. Yeah, thanks to our mods for getting that link in there. Uh, our Wojo is looking forward to Reaper tonight. Unluckily, Raven re up their membership. Thank you. Okay, Super Chad said the podcast with Preach Day was so good. I wish it went on for another hour. Speaking of co-op games, games like Monster Hunter that you've already done is super fun to watch, at least personally. We like Monster Hunter. 
It's not the. It's just not that easy to fire up and start co-oping is the problem. Yeah, it feels like one that we should definitely go level first, and then once we're past, maybe even the story, like it'd be easier to lock together the system to engage one another was really convoluted. Yeah, it, it, we have we have a major like pulling of the brake moment every time we try and pull to, play that game together because we just run into some weird issue that we can't get past. Yeah. Um. So it's just it's uh. We don't like we don't like that that moment of feeling like the the stream has just come to a complete halt. Like so, it's uh for technical and yeah to, to enter codes and exchange codes while trying to keep them yeah. not and on also, stream. Also, like and... when we when we tried the most recent one, we just straight up had some bugs. Like we, things were just not working the way they were supposed to. Yeah, I don't blame the game. I do really want to try it again. I'll blame the game a little. <laughs> <laughs> if the game doesn't work it is the game's fault that is fair well the, i don't blame that the onboarding to start the game is bad if the multiplayer is meant for like end game sometimes you know like oh doing random fair. missions and doing yeah. dailies or whatever yeah that's fair that's fair uh sovereign 2k4 thank you for your uh your seven months really appreciate it. Uh, base building survival game would be fun to watch we did uh valheim together before we did all this and yeah. it was like bonus content for our patrons should dig those up somewhere i don't yeah, think, I think at a certain point blast. we stopped doing it though we, I would... I, we we beat it we we beat the final boss you could beat when valheim was new um and it's it's some of my fondest memories playing with you it was a good time i would i would 100 percent play factorio with you i'd do satisfactory with you i love building anything with building, dude. I'm, you don't yeah. really need to you really don't need to convince me do they still do multiplayer neighborhoods and Sims? Because I think just the Sims, like I would love to make some really rude <laughs> asshole neighbors and ruin your neighborhood. I have like, no I idea. I've hilarious. never played Sims. I, I always, I, I know, it, I think two Sims two. I think they added multiplayer neighborhoods or something. I remember always thinking that'd be a cool idea, and I never ended up taking advantage of any multiplayer shit in any Sims game. Oh, I played I Busted a, Out. Busting Out. I think it was, it was like an a, a expansion that was like stand standalone. Sims maybe it, dude they've done so many yeah. i have no idea i i was really really into the sims one and two um and i've played a little bit of three and four but not a, not a, i don't have the time that i used to have to sink into games like that but that was always my chill game i was always at one time in my life i was really hardcore about counter-strike and the sims <laughs> like that was that was my gaming diet for a while um Kauru super chatted uh thank you for the another one said ever play natural selection back in the day i did not i did and i loved it and i played a lot a lot of natural selection too um that was the one i was telling you about this where uh red player as i often call them player one would get to be base manager and everybody else was the units and so player oh, one was playing yes, starcraft this has come up yeah this has come up and it's kind of like vaguely starcraft looking monsters I'm and stuff I'm not sure of its current state. You know, here's the Storm fan, so I don't want to be like, it's dead, never play it again. But I think it's having server-ish growth, you know, tail end, all that kind of thing. Like, my my experience with logging into Natural Selection last year was kind of iffy. But I love the okay. game. Okay. And then Ale Super Shay. Hey, guys, Kyle, that thing I DM'd you about is now live. Thank you both for the entertainment. Love watching you both. Glad I could catch a stream. Oh, yes. I, I can't open DMs while I'm because I got Garrett's face captured here, but I shall check it out. And what what is the thing? What, 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 <laughs> let me see. <laughs> As if I open the thing and then who knows what the thing, thing is. Oh, cool. Oh, congrats to you. Uh, would you would you like me to post the link for everybody? I'd be happy to do that. Do it. Yeah, you're kicking here. Yeah, and you're bringing it, it up. Yeah. It, if, it's, if it's public, yeah. I mean, yeah, let's, do all, it. let's grab a link do here. It. Do what you yeah, want. I was being told about this project here. Be sure to check it out. It's a very cool community project to basically uh, find cool ways to thank the devs and, you know, get thank yous in their hands. Oh, shit. Oh, that's adorable. Uh, that's the guest window. Here's Garrett. Garrett's back. That is freaking adorable. It's a uh, ff14project.com. 14 is spelled with Roman numerals if anyone's curious about yeah. it. Yeah. Congrats this on the is launch. neat. Yeah, congrats on launching that. Ah, uh, thanks for coming to member, Els. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for you the chili super team. sticker, Chili. Much appreciated. All right, we're going to go get this posted because that's the next yeah, job gotta, of the podcast. 
I got to figure out lunch. Uh, I think Katie's like probably wondering. I make lunch for us every day. So she's probably like, what's going on? What's up with the schedule today? Yep. So So we'll see you tonight, 5 p.m. Pacific for Reaper unlocking and ability explorations and probably dungeons like we figure it out and all that kind of thing. Uh, All leading to next Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific, which will be Endwalker basically from the title card. So we are we are in Charlayan. We have disrespected Daddy Levier's house, and we'll see where it goes, and that'll be fun. So we'll see you soon. Yep. Thanks for joining, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks, everybody. Well, a lot of natural selection fans in here. Yeah, natural selection was great, man. It, it was really good. Oh, Phasmophobia will be returning for Halloween. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Someone mentioned yeah, it. that was great. Yeah, yeah, we did it last year. Go watch it's last horrifying. year's VOD. It's amazing. It was horrifying. Yeah.